Hello and welcome to Cutting to the Ball in the post truth Apocalypse. I'm Ben and as always I'm joined by Gaz. Hello. And Mike. Hello. And it's a movie special this week and we're going to talk about Starship Troopers, the uh, 1997 classic. It certainly is. Yep. Paul Verhoeven. It. Paul Verhoeven. My first watch this afternoon in a well over ten years, man. I haven't seen it. Last time I would have watched it would have been on a VHS tape. Wow. That is quite a while ago, yeah. So I enjoyed it. I was impressed. Yeah, it's a great film. It is. But um, before we get into that, we'll do the weird news. Uh, it's random stuff. We found the net this week. Might take us 20 minutes, half an hour, and then we'll get into the main thrust of today's topic. So uh, what's up first, Mike? Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. I found this the other night, and I'm still not sure whether it's satire or not. What's the website? Um, Pathos, it's an atheist website. I asked them, and they haven't got back to me yet, but it's <laughs> fucking brilliant, so I'm going to... Our Kansas minister sells believers, quote, heavenly air in mason jars. I think, sorry to be pedantic, I think... Perhaps Is Arkansas. That Arkansas? Or... Yeah. Arkansas. Arkansas. Or... Arkansas, Arkansas, Arkansas. Arkansas. Oh, well, well. Fuck knows why. Oh, right. I was looking for the W for that. Yeah, no, I'm sure that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, it is, yeah. Oh, well, either way. It don't matter. Yeah, either way. Southern America. Yeah, (laughs) you know the type. (laughs) Pamburn, Arkansas, Reverend Lucius E. Polk is selling Heaven's Air out of his 2009 Ford Focus hatchback, Uh and believers are loving it. Reverend Polk is selling empty mason jars supposedly filled with the air of heaven for $8.99 and can't keep up with the demand. Quote, God is blessing me spiritually and financially, the man of God stated. My mustard seed of faith is growing so much I can now afford to buy those $20 scratch tickets. This has to be satire. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. The way it's written, definitely. But I also kind of think it could be true. (laughs) The label on Heaven's Air bills the product as 110% pure air from Heaven, and you too can breathe the same air as our Lord Jesus above. Reverend Polk tells of the all the health benefits from cracking open a mason jar of heaven's air and breathing the contents. They include, but are not limited to, dislodging bile, cure sick or sickness or headaches, female ailments, <laughs> colicky pains, vapors from the spleen, skepticism, <laughs> <laughs> gripes and dropsy. Dropsy. <laughs> I don't know what dropsy is. <laughs> I don't, but I've heard of it. I think it's one of those old sort of Victorian diseases, isn't it? It sounds like yeah. it. Vapors from the spleen. <laughs> it's heaven's air, who knows? Is that a fart? Possibly. Um, I have questions. So do I. Right. Uh, why is the air in his Ford car considered... Oh, he's selling it at the back of his car. Oh, OK. Not the what? air from inside his car. Right, OK. <laughs> I don't know where he's My getting mistake. the air from. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. What? Surely to... Collect air from heaven, one would need some sort of transmorphic interdimensional reality shifting vehicle. To... You've got to be able to. How do you get to heaven? Where's heaven? I've got questions. Well, he will say that he goes there on the. What's the plane called? Yes. Oh, the astral plane. The astral plane. Maybe he's got some, some so middle man. He astrally man. projects himself to the. <laughs> nah, I call him bullshit on this guy. So I, you, I, you astrally, let's say you can't astrally project yourself. To heaven. How do you then physically, how does your astral projection physically capture some air and bring it back through to this side? That's a valid question. Yeah. I think so, Mike. Mm. I'm actually going to go that this is satire. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's not, he's put it, I don't, I don't put it past someone out there who's selling. No, no we've had air. some mad, crazy, weird news in the past. We have. I and mean, this I wouldn't know, quite a place. I know for a fact that Catherine Zeta Jones has jars of Welsh air shipped to her in LA. Yeah, there's some people selling to China, aren't they? Now, yeah. to be fair, now, 
Can you imagine? I've never been to Los Angeles, but my understanding is that there is a smug. Only in the poor part of Tokyo. Yes. <laughs> well, there's so no. The, the smug hangs over the whole of LA, man. And Not if you're in them Hollywood Hills. It doesn't. I guess you're more in it, aren't you? To know to how hope you are. No, but the point is, LA is an environmental nightmare. It's a fucking hot, heavingly hot desert. Right, where some fucking dumb cunts decided to build a city, right, <laughs> where they have to ship their water in, and like, I don't know, maybe that's not LA. Either way, that's Vegas, I think. There's a fucking smog. It's rank. It's polluted. You're Catherine Zeta. You grew up in the valleys. That's of true. South Wales, where it's pure and lovely. God's country. Now, I'm not going to put it past. I bet if you get your air shipped over from South Wales, you're in the LA smog, and you open up that crate. I bet you can go. <sighs> Oh, oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Come in here, Michael. Yeah, that's probably the secret it. of his fucking youth. That's, that's a good point, yeah. Come yeah. in here, Michael, and have a fucking lung full of this with you. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, I know the Saudi Arabian ship in sand from Australia, so it's not the craziest thing. Yeah, that's heard. true. What's wrong with their sand? <laughs> apparently it's no good for construction. Oh, too much blood mixed in it. <laughs> <laughs> The blood of women and gay men. <laughs> oh, it, it's very, yeah, very you. clogged up. <laughs> I, I try to make something with sand, but very cloggy. So much blood. <laughs> <laughs> so much blood. <laughs> but look at this skyscraper! Very <laughs> uh, manning of podcasts. <laughs> oh, so, uh, Did you see the footage? <laughs> this is interesting. Okay. Uh, it's sort of a weird news story. Uh, I was made aware of it last night. Uh, at the boxing last night, a guy wore a mm. Union Jack. Oh, it was a Union Jack. Go uh, on. He wore a Union Jack waistcoat. Right. Now, the rules state at these events, no flags or national things, basically, in the audience. It's sort of, uh, there's a dress code. Yeah, these boxing, boxing match, events, yeah. right? To try and class it up, I suppose, a little bit and avoid... So it's a big arena and the guy wore his Union Jack waistcoat. T fucking 12 security guys like go up to him in the stands and are going to throw him out. And he takes it off. He has broke the rules by wearing it. That's yeah. one point. But the people around him are just like, fuck it. Like, in the end, that many people, it doesn't get violent, but that many people, they block him from being ejected. Yeah. And they're just like, you don't want to fuck, you're trying to throw him out for wearing a Union Jack? <laughs> In Britain, like you need to fuck <laughs> off, like, and eventually everyone just gives up, and they because he's took it off, so they leave him alone, like. And people are, a lot of people online I've read saying, "Oh, he's just a gammon who deserves it," because the rules are, it says in the rules, no fucking national flags, no. But at the same time, I don't care if you're a gammon or not. It's a pretty weird state of affairs where <laughs> you're getting thrown out of a venue for wearing your country's flag. Yeah, but in the country that. You're in. But it's a dress code. There's always been a dress code. Yeah, but what? There's so always been a dress code of these things. Okay. And if everyone else is abiding by it, why should you be given any special treatment? Stop being a prick. Put a black waistcoat on. Well, he took it off, but they're still going to throw him out. Fucking gallant cunt. He deserves everything he got. He's beat him up outside. Oh, Ben. Give your fanny a wipe. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. You fucking vegan. Come on. No, I'm, I'm not being vegan. Come on, you're a to... football fan, you're a fucking military historian. Just How do you know he's a gammon? So well, anyone you called him a gammon, I was assuming that he was. No, that's what everyone it. like you who's getting hysterical oh, no, 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 in no, the no. comments is no. calling him. I, I, if he was like a 50-year-old ruddy-faced man, I'd go with gammon. If he isn't, then he's just a bloke who can't read the fucking dress code, isn't he? But any, so, any, so it's a bad thing to have national pride? No, it's not. But so why is he a some... fucking gammon prick who should be beaten up for wearing a union jacket? Well, you called, you called him a gammon, I'm going. No, I didn't. You I did. Said, I said, oh, right. the people okay. in the comments are split 50 oh. well, 50. I haven't seen the guy. Half the people so... are getting hysterical like you. Oh. He's a fucking gammon. I'll retract my gammon ship until I've seen a picture of him. He probably, he's, probably does fit the description of a gammon, to be fair. <laughs> But how do we know? I, I think it's a sad state of affairs. 12 fucking security guards. You fucking guy, mate. Or just dress smart like you're supposed to. He was. He was wearing a fucking nice... The Union Jack waistcoat is never, is never 
fucking smart. It looks tacky at oh, this. So Wearing a flag looks tacky. Yeah, but he was there to support. But then the, the fucking greatest irony is the boxer he was there to support walks out with a fucking Union Jack fucking face mask on. And he's allowed to have it. He's in the ring. But he's an ear fucking gammon racist prick who should be beaten up. No, he's a boxer. He's hard. See? <laughs> and therein... Yeah, but he's allowed to have it. You've answered your own yeah. question. But he's yeah. allowed to have it. He's in the ring. Doesn't say anything about I him agree. If you break the fucking... If you break the dress code, you break the dress code. But can you not see how this is going to anger an entire group of people? The visual of a man who has paid his money to go and watch a fucking boxing event who's worn a waistcoat with the flag of the nation he lives in, who is also the nation of the boxer he's supporting, and 12 fucking security guards want to physically, violently eject him from his seat. And they tried, and they were stopped by fellow Brits who thought it was a load of fucking bollocks. And I think, yay, I think that's good. Fuck what happened next week, though? What a load of Nazis coming with Nazi flags? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the Nazis. <laughs> Stolen <laughs> valour. <laughs> anyway. Should we move on? Yeah. yeah. Um, this is I Thought You Were Going. A uh, boxer wears America First war shorts against Mexican fighter and gets soundly yes, beaten. Uh, yeah, I did see this. Well, I think it's always a risk. <laughs> it's d- in, in, a, in boxing, being cocky in any way, shape or form is always going to risk blowing up spectacularly in your face. Unless you're Muhammad Ali. He got look. It, it blew up in his face several times. He did, times he did. As well, but you know, when he was younger, and he could, he could, mm. you know, he could do it. Yeah. Um, but also, I would think you shouldn't provoke your opponent in boxing. You don't want to. It's like waving a red flag to a bull, isn't it? If he'd have yeah. worn a shorts and said, "I'm with the Mexicans," he'd have put him in a bit more relaxed <laughs> and laid back, and he could have won. I'm sure I'd love a psychologist, someone to do a scientific study. I'm sure if you watched all the press conferences of all the major fights. And then I'm sure there'd be some correlation with the one who makes the biggest fucking... The one who tries to get in the other one's head as much as possible, who's really going for it. I'm sure more often than not, they end up fucking losing. Yeah, probably. I mean, it works a lot of times, I guess, as well, but I'm sure... You should have posted a video of them fucking... Those two girls. Them two women yeah, LNA exactly people. Yeah, I was going to say. The one had been bullied and it was something with her dad had died and the other was yeah. like giving all this about her dad and her, she was a yeah. weak person for being bullied and all this. And all that woman, did, just, woman just, stood just, just stood there and stared at Do you know what? She was <laughs> repeating to herself, like, she's a religious lady. She's Romanian. No, her parents are Romanians who moved to America, so she's American but or Lithuanian, one of those. Oof. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but anyway, she was repeating the Lord's Prayer to herself and just basically trying to be a monk, just trying to be as calm yeah, and, yeah. And, and then, yeah, like you said, beat the shit out of the girl twice. Yeah. So then that's like with this, the egg, the potential for egg on your <laughs> face by being Billy Big Bucks yeah. before a fight. I mean, I get it before football or something like that when afterwards you're just like, ah, oh, well, yeah, 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 we lost. This happened, that happened. But combat sports... <laughs> <laughs> Wearing shorts, painted like a wall, to go and fight a Mexican. Oh, this will work. I'll make him so angry. fucking angry and focused <laughs> on destroying me. I will disrespect not only him as a man, I'll disrespect his culture. I'll disrespect his DNA, that his entire identity as a person. Yeah, it'd be fine. That, will, that won't hurt me in any way, shape or form. Definitely going to win this. <laughs> He's going to be so focused on destroying me. I'm yeah. just going to sneak in there. Yeah. But, but. <laughs> Simple as. Left, right. He's down. Did, uh, right, did it, no, didn't. The clear anti-immigration and border war references backfired in a major way for Salka as Vargas proceeded to dominate the fight in a sick-throned referee technical decision. So he got knocked down too many times, effectively. <laughs> After the fight, Vargas said he was surprised by Salka's shorts and the pro-Trump political statement. Vargas said he took the shorts as extra motivation. He said that, uh, I was surprised when Salka was coming to the ring and I saw him dressed with a war on his clothes, re- all representing the war, but I kept calm. I was focused on making my fight and on my plan, Vargas said in Spanish to ESPN Deportes. Once we were already in the ring, the war was an extra ingredient for my motivation to win. <laughs> so when I had him head on, I gave it everything. 
Whatever it is, whatever it is, I represent Mexico, and I feel that everything about that wall is against all of my exactly. country. Exactly. You, you what gave you said exactly. You yeah. gave him the inspiration. I have to represent my entire nation. Yeah. Yeah. You know what we stand for. This guy is mocking us. Oh fuck. Very clever. Oh well, and he'll always be known as. Oh, remember that wall guy who got yeah. knocked out by the Mexican? <laughs> yeah. It'll be a meme forever. Yeah. Although Vargas, he's got, actually, he's got a decent professional record. Uh, what's that? Twenty-five wins, one, one by draw, one, one draw, and two by knockout. I think that's two losses. His professional record is twenty-five, one and two. Yeah, twenty-five wins, one draw, two no, two losses. Not too bad. No, mm -hmm. not shabby at all. We so, want to last bit of news for now. Yeah. This is you don't like this. <laughs> Edible Anus Company makes chocolate moulds of yours or a loved one's butthole as was sent in by a listener. Imagine giving that your nan for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, but whose butthole? Your own butthole. Your own butthole. Here you go, nan. You've never seen my arse, have you? <laughs> Here's my puckered anus in the form of chocolate. Oh, you probably saw it when I was a baby, but uh, has it changed much? <laughs> <laughs> but you'll put your glasses on, have a look. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, strap in and get ready people. This one's a doozy. A new company called Edible Anus is here to make your dreams come true. That is, if your dreams are eating a chocolate mould of your significant other's butthole. For the reasonable price of $38.95, Edible Anus will mail you five boxes of white milk and dark chocolate anuses. According to legend, or rather real life, the company's founder Magnus Irvin uh, didn't have the easiest time inventing his chocolate assholes. According to Irvin, the first time I pulled the stuff in, in my bum, and it all ran up past me nuts and into my face. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> the first thing I, I would have done is not attempted this on my own. <laughs> well, he's an inventor in his garage, isn't he? Look at your wife, hey, just come for yeah. some chocolate in my house, would you? So. I bet this is going to, the natural conclusion of this, is going to end up selling famous people's arseholes, isn't it? Probably. And making a fortune. That's capitalism. Like porn stars' yeah, assholes. Or like, I don't know, Mavis from Coronation Street. I don't know. <laughs> Mavis from Coronation Street? Wow, that's a random <laughs> 90s. Well, people are having fun at the moment on the internet. There is a, a new Hellboy trailer. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen that. It's quite actually got like, the look of that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. But like, what? Speaking of soaps, like quite oh. a famous the little old lady. Yeah. She was in like EastEnders for donkeys. Yeah, years. it's little Mo. Yeah. Oh, oh, big yeah. Mo, big Mo, the old the old woman. The yeah, old yeah, that, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. there. Is she's firing a machine trailer, gun. Firing a fucking machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she just must have auditioned and awesome. Yeah. Got I think that part is set in London. It seems to be set in uh, London. Yeah, a lot. it's a fish and chip. Uh, from what I can work out in the trailer, the entrance to this secret headquarters is through a chip shop called Cod's Wallop. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's actually in the comics or not because I've never read a Hellboy comic. I actually only knew of him from the movies. It's one that yeah. passed me by, admittedly. I had no idea he existed. No, I love the films, though. Until the movie. Yeah, me. I haven't seen the second one. Oh, I, actually, I prefer the second one yeah. than the first. first. I've never seen it. I love the first one. I really love the first one. That was that a long time ago. I was at uni when that came out. That's fucking 2001 or two, isn't it? Yeah, We're so right. old. Yeah. Well, this um, is not, Starship Troopers is 97, doesn't it? That under film. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, we, haven't, fin we haven't finished secondary school. When do you reckon the first time? We'll, we'll get to that. Um, right. Uh, let's move down a little so bit. So where's this guy? So I'm curious to know who. So is he selling his own? He's selling his own asshole, or, does, or do you go in as a customer, and you have your own asshole made? You can. Uh, I think you kind of um, send away for the kit. Oh. Uh, According to the company's website, the edible anus first saw the light of day in 2006, when the London London artist Magnus Irvin made a range of them in multicoloured chocolate to present in an ex exhibition. It was at the ensuing show that he met and formed a partnership with Mitzel Reitzma, a tall man of Dutch descent. Since then, the two of them have worked together with a range of products available today. Why is he being tall and Dutch? <laughs> <laughs> Does that help with the anus making? Yeah. I have the very good view of the anus. I presume it's for the, the, up here. It's I just presume it's for the chocolate expertise. The Dutch are quite good at chocolate, uh, aren't they? And the and, anus. And the, and the anus, yeah. yeah. The anus, the Dutch, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's crazy sexy Dutch. Of course there's a Dutchman. Of course there's a Dutchman behind this. What are we thinking? Sexy Dutch. It could be any other nationality, could it? No. <laughs> I guarantee you that Irvin was just like, yeah, here's my next piece of art. It's yeah. um, some plastic cast on my ears. And the Dutchman's gone, 
Doesn't that make you fucking sick as well? That we're going doing like fucking ten hour shifts and like fucking you know I'm doing fifty hours of bastard week in a van on the roads of England and this cunt fucking rolls up to a big posh fucking gallery. Uh, here's my exhibition, darlings. Where is it? Chocolate from me bum. <laughs> Some eccentric Dutch millionaire. Uh, <laughs> I'll fucking buy that idea. <laughs> 200 grand. Uh, sold, darling. Sold. F- it makes me fucking blood boil. What's art about that? And then, oh, that's a rabbit hole we go. Oh, art could be anything. I know what art is, but at the same time, I know what it isn't. Come on, we all do. That's not it's so fucking bourgeois and fucking. It just gets weird when really carry on. Stupid. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go on then. Um, <laughs> Read it then. Initially, <laughs> Mr. Irvine tried to cast his own anus with messy and disastrous results. <laughs> While explaining his failure to a chance acquaintance at a bus stop, he was gratified to find that his fellow bus passenger was willing to allow him to cast her anus. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> is this legit? There's pictures of the bus. Is this your bus. stuff? <laughs> no, next one. <laughs> Could I put some liquid chocolate up your arsehole, let it dry and sell it? Yeah, um, well, I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> The job was done just over half an hour later that afternoon, and all subsequent anuses have been based on this casting. It is a matter of interest that the person who currently donated the service has no idea her anus has now gone global. Well, that's wrong, isn't it? It shouldn't she be getting paid royalties She should have a It was a homeless person should... at the bus stop, wasn't it? Bastard, he's coerced some homeless woman yeah. with a... Bag of meth. You'd think he'd have picked a pretty bum <laughs> old. That's it, it doesn't look too bad if it's a homeless woman. I mean, it's intact, it's not lapsed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all in time. It's not loud. It's going the right way. <laughs> it hasn't been ravaged by years of anal fucking, you know, fun. Yeah. I think that only happens in pornos, really. <laughs> well, no, I know for a fact it does. But I've only met one girl. With a prolapsed anus. Out of the many, you know, I'm not prolapsed, but she definitely told me stories of a couple of embarrassing situations because of the fact she had like ten years of. Of regular anals. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Shit the bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don't wow. ask to mold, make a mould of her anus. <laughs> <laughs> you need a lot of chocolate. Uh, can we go into the film now? <laughs> 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 Oh my life, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, I've met some people. <laughs> oh dear. Classy birds. Right, anyway. Oh, can I call a quick press break? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going make a mold of my anus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're back and we're going to go launch into Starship Troopers 1997, starring Casper Van Dien as Johnny Rico, Denise Richards as Carmen Abanez. Dina oh. Meyer as Dizzy Flores, Jake Boosie as Ace Levy, Neil Patrick Harris as Carl Jenkins, and also Clancy Brown of um, Highlander fame and SpongeBob SquarePants fame <laughs> yeah. as uh, Zim, and Michael Ironside, who's been in a lot of air hole movies, hasn't he? Mm. Definitely Total Recall. Robocop? Yes. One of the Robocops? Not sure. Maybe. Possibly. As Jean Rajchak. Oh, uh. So, film starts with the recruiting advert for the Fed- Federation, the Federal Network. Yeah, and it's totally taken from the Triumph of the Will. Yes. Yeah, it's an outdoor rally for the Reichs Arbeit Dienst. Oh, so it's... Over there. Uh, Guy with shovels. Ah, and the German the Reichs yeah. sort of work force then, basically. Work corps, something like that. Yeah, well, they're all stood in formation. They're all doing, I'm doing my part, I'm doing my part. Yeah. And then the little kid comes out dressed in all the gear. I'm doing my part. No, you're not, mate. I'll <laughs> see you on Clad Dathu somehow. Spoiler straight, alert. <laughs> straight away with the fucking um, fascist Nazi imagery then. Yeah. Uh, evoking it from the opening shot. Yeah. Basically. Although I wouldn't call the, his stall. the mobile infantry's dress, uh, field uniforms, the... the you know, the body on it, how it's particularly Nazi. When, when it's the officer, isn't it? No, it's, it's the, the officers in the dress it? uniform, because even the dress uniforms are quite... Uh... Anyway, yeah, you get a recruiting advert. The badges advert. and the, ins- the insignia of a bit. reminiscence. Yeah, the lightning bolt and all that, yeah. Yeah, they're just sort of... Uh, Toy- fairly obviously a nod, aren't they? But not... I suppose only because we... Kn- would everybody see that as a Nazi nod, or only if you've... 
spend time looking at that um, shit. The, I think the, the officers' uniforms, you would probably twig straight away because you've seen the at least one World bad. War One movie, haven't They're you? They're pretty World famous the Nazis, aren't they? They, they are. <laughs> They're the poster boys of National <laughs> Socialism, you'd argue. I don't know if anyone knows who they are anymore because all you've got to do is fucking uh, vote for Trump and you're called one now. You haven't got to gas anybody, but anyway, that's <laughs> the story. We've also got in the uh, the network ad the um, because it always ends with "Would you like to know more?" Yes. Uh, the bug meteor, bug meteors are coming to Earth, but planetary defences are better than ever. Panspermia. Panspermia. Yeah. That's where like you spread yourself through space, and that's how we got here. Ah. So that's what I thought of at the first. Are they? I know they're sending the meteors to, as weapons, but are they also yes, spores? Yes, yeah. spores, 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 yeah. yeah. So Other planets, yeah. It's Panspermia, yeah, 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 isn't it? Yeah. Look at me. And then you get a bit of background on the junior science. <laughs> <I said. laughs> It'll be seen if you keep this right up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he thinks that lizard people live in a hollow mood now. So why? <laughs> oh man, it comes to me to the sensible one. Do you know what? I've been thinking about the lizard people quite deeply. This will be brief, I promise. But I've been thinking of quite a lot about it. That Even if they're not like actual shape-shifting lizard people, they are lizard people because the lizard part of your brain which is real, isn't it? Yeah. It deals with the base emotions of survival, fear, he- anger. These uber successful high echelon people are all so much more reptile brain, lizard brain, yeah, in the, the, way, that they, actually, in the yeah. way that they yeah. operate. Like, operating like psychopaths, but they don't give a fuck about the masses and the little people. They're manipulating things and sacrificing people for their gains. I think that's what the reptilian elite actually is. They're just more yeah. into that's maybe where all the symbolism comes in from. Yeah. And actually shape shifted and all that shit. They just we believe in the lizard brain and that part of yourself, like no emotion. They kind of do shape shift in mm. respect because they go from being these, you know, psychopathic businessmen to when they get into mm. the public life, they act fairly normally. Mm. So it is there is kind of a shape shift in a way. Mm. Was a mental shape shift. So, yes, I think it's all yeah, it's a lizard brain, that's key, that's it. You know, which may we can maybe do a segue and factor that back into this discussion because uh, we're already seeing, isn't it, that like the military's it's a militarized society yes, in absolutely. a way, isn't it? It's yeah. like this is everything. Um, yeah, which reminds you of a certain certain culture. <laughs> I was trying to think of a Nazi song, but thankfully none came to mind. <laughs> so I just made a weird noise. <laughs> I was trying to think of that. How it go? That's it, Deutsche, Deutsche, Uber, That's the one. Liz, something like that. Yeah, I think that was the national anthem. It was the national anthem, yeah. Uh, well, this is all a bit yeah. that, isn't it? It is certainly, okay. yeah. But everybody talks like this and we're all so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so you, can, you can imagine the Federation had a few torchlight parades, couldn't you? Mm. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Join us or die. <laughs> at the end of that um, sort of little bit of background there that they break net now and take you live to Klandathu which is the bug's home planet mm. now basically the reporter's there and he's like oh yeah it's an ugly planet it's a bug planet mm. and then the bugs come into view and all the MI troopers aren't standing there well, not many of them are standing there they're six foot bugs uh, aren't they yeah, in there they're on four legs armoured they're quite harsh looking yeah. yeah do you know what I mean it's like whoa armoured spiky so sort of spidery scorpiony. Scorpiony, I go yeah. with four to six legs. Uh, phew, horrible, isn't it? Blow off a limb. It's still eighty-six percent combat effective. <laughs> it's a bit As different. They say, <laughs> I mean, these things really—they're they're three times the size of a dude. Yeah. Let's face it; we're quite puny compared to these things. It's different than a little green man, and as you'll see in the film, and uh, and I read in the factoids on uh, the IMDb at the time in nineteen ninety-seven. I don't know if this has been beaten, but. <laughs> this movie had the record for the most live rounds fired. Yes, it did, yeah, I've got that stat, yeah. Because they yeah. just fire and fire. Those guns and they do, fire. Do not run out of ammunition. <laughs> and the fucking alien things are so big and nasty that they. That they fire. <laughs> they just. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> like, it goes. It takes a lot to just take one down. And then when it's, they start swarming and there's shitloads yeah. of them. Then, yeah, they're not insignificant, but these fuckers. I'll, I'll get to the mobile infantry's lack of tactics mm. later on, because mm. when we discuss the main... This is just shown as a, a bit of a flashback, in a way, or setting up the story. Um, the best thing it is what I've found is the reporter then gets bitten in half. Yeah. 
All right, this bug grips him around the middle, picks him up, mm. starts shaking it, and his cameraman is still <laughs> there, yeah, filming it all, and you're like, is he trying to get on a fucking Attenborough program? <laughs> He's a pro, man. He's a, he's a fucking... Anyway, <laughs> Rico and his buddies do come in and turn around and shoot the bug, and the reporter's bitten in half, the cameraman's yeah. still with him. Mm. And the last scene you get is that Rico's injured. He's on his on his back, on his on his ass, yeah. shooting at a bug using the shotgun attachment, which you'd think they'd all be using. Yeah, why don't you use that first if it's stronger? <laughs> I'd be using that think first that. personally. Mm -hmm. And this bug goes and he screams, and the scene is cut. Yeah. And you're like, wow, that was pretty grim, dark. Yeah. But then we go one year earlier, and this is set. We've got two different accounts on this set. 23rd century or 2197 is yeah. the one. I think Verhoeven says... 2197, he says. 2197, but... Mm. Near enough for 23rd century, only three years old. Yeah. Well, yeah. you got a high school, and you got Johnny Rico, the guy we just saw mm. getting potentially killed by a bug. He's dating a girl called Carmen Abanez. Abanez. They're in Mr. Ratchak's civics lesson. Yes, um, can I just say something about the, the classroom they're in? Yeah. It's filled with portraits of philosophers. Yeah. yeah. Aristotle, Spinoza, Nietzsche and Arendt. And they're all known for their influence on politics and political theory, especially Arendt, known for influence on totalitarianism. Ah, and so, that's interesting with the society yeah. you've got. And they're there because I am the director of Paul Verhoeven and I'm a very intellectual person who happens to be making these silly Hollywood movies. I'm very um, anti-Nazi. Yes, I yeah. grew up underneath them. I hate them, so I have to put these. But he hated the book, didn't he? Because the book, yeah, is pro-fascism. He said he read yeah. like two chapters and was like, "Fuck that." But apparently, this book, this the, the dude who wrote the original book, the movie is vastly. Fucking, oh yeah. It, it doesn't give a fuck about the book. This guy was he. He was an ex-military guy, wasn't he? And like, yeah. he did really believe that that the public should be made to do military service. Yes, yeah, he believed that a lack of discipline led to a moral decline in 1950s yeah. US society and advocated for corporal and critical... Capital? Capital punishment. Goddamn kids with the goddamn rock and roll music and the goddamn cars and the hair. Yeah. I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> Wish I was part of that. I would <laughs> fucking slap that Elvis man. <laughs> but the film is a tongue-in-cheek of... Yeah, fascism is meant to be mocking fascism. It's him, way. like, what is beautiful about this, we should just really, I think it's an awesome, when you really think about it, Paul Verhoeven, he's basically an art house director from, he's Dutch, isn't he? Yeah. 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 He's an art house director who did very, um, apparently, I've never seen any of them, but very artistic, uh, avant-garde type movies, you know, that you expect from, you know. Europe, Europe. European cinema, yeah. Yeah, um, who then somehow was offered this Robocop script and because uh, I'm so obsessed with Robocop I actually did my end of year essay on it my first year of uni on Robocop and his wife read the script and was like oh there's more to this she said you could there's it's not just fluff there's something you should read this one right as there is a lot of symbology in Robocop yeah, the resurrection Jesus, and all that it's yeah. an allegory for Christ you can you well you can read it that way very Blatantly, actually, walking. He walks on water at the end, for fuck's sake. <laughs> right? If you think about it, Robocop, literally yeah. walks on water at the end. Anyway, so he, Robocop's a commercial success, though. Big success. So then he finds himself suddenly in the world of Hollywood. Is that about, sorry, is that 87 Robocop? 87 Robocop, yeah. So 10 years previously. And then, um, did anyone. I should. Fuck, I didn't. I can't really remember his list of films in between. He did Total but, Recall, didn't he? Yeah, Total Recall, yeah, yeah. after Robocop, I that think. That was like 80, 80, 89. But anyway, the guy, so then he he gets good at making these quite visceral, violent sort of movies, sci-fi movies, with a little bit more going on underneath. Yeah. Right? Mm. Um, and yeah, it's just a weird, do you think it's an awesome time? Because you don't really get that now. No, you know, everything's like, very much propaganda, ironically, the way yeah. that the federal network is given it in this film. Oh, the yeah. studio seems to have so much more control over a director's overall vision. I suppose because so much more money is at stake, yeah. to be fair. But um, I just think it's awesome that this dude found himself... And he wasn't in good... Because in 1995, he made Showgirls. Yeah. Which fucking almost destroyed him career-wise. <laughs> like, uh, it is it was a, a shit flop. film. <laughs> it, it, was. Was. it is terrible. It's, shit. it's unwatchable, man. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's fucking bad. In my personal opinion, mm, it's me. bad. So then this is a bit of a sort of resurrection, in a way, and his sort of send-off, because he didn't do anything again after this in Hollywood. Oh, really. did he? 
Yeah, That's this is his last it? sort of blockbustery sci-fi. Because for some reason this film didn't do very well. The critics didn't like it. Possibly because it portrays Americans as the fascist yeah, morons. Yeah. Worldwide it did better, 121 million worldwide. Mm. But we all loved it at the time. I was going to ask you earlier, but I cut myself off. When was the first time you saw this thing? Because we were still at school. At the cinema. Cinema. the cinema. Oh, did we you? Had, we had oh, an older I, mate. I didn't. Um, a guy called Andy who was in his... He was mm. like 21, 22. No, he wasn't. He was about... He was four years older than me. I was 15 at the time, so he was 19. Oh, so yeah, so he basically, at the cinema back in then, you could just, he could go to the thing. Yeah. We could all hang around at the edge. I had a beard yeah. at 15, so I was all right. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> but I went to bit three or four times to see this. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, we I went, loved to, this I went movie. twice with you. I loved I this I remember movie. a week after, my sister and her husband were looking for a film to go to the cinema. Yeah. And they're 10 years older than me. Mm. And I said, Starship Troopers, I've been twice, it's awesome. Yeah. They come back and said, what a load of shite that was. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I think I didn't see this then until on VHS. Uh, would have been two couple of years later mm -hmm. on VHS. Yeah, it was no. fifteen year old boys. This was the fucking film. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine, this was the best yeah. film since Aliens. Mm. Yeah, in that respect, I loved it. And even at that time, I could see because I was obsessed with. I saw RoboCop at a stupidly young age on VHS, thanks to an older brother, and I've always been lifelong obsession with it. And this, you could tell straight away. He's took a couple of tropes that worked in Robocop, hasn't he? Instead of the adverts, the sort of commercials, you get the recruitment yeah. drive things. But they're, Yeah, it's, that's taken from World War II propaganda films as well. Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, you know what I mean? Literally. Like, join up now and, yeah. you know... But you know what I mean, though? The, the way they're cut into the film mm. and stuff, does it not remind you in Robocop of the way oh, the adverts... Yeah. The way that it's like, you can tell it's him. Yeah. You can tell this is him directing, this is his um, movie. And I was actually impressed, having watched it for the first time in years today, these opening scenes, it's all very Star Wars, man. There's some good model shots and... I think the special effects CG. hold up in this movie. Yeah, I was impressed with the space stuff, man. The ships and everything looked fucking... I think it looks a bit dated now, personally. Some effects did, and I'll tell you when the we get to The asteroid bit and... It looks a bit... There were a couple of shots where I was like, ooh. Mm. But I think that space stuff, though... Think about it, man. It looks yeah, looks decent. The, it looks it decent. I like the I like the scale of it. Mm, you know, yeah. all the sh the fleet ships lined up, all just you know dropping the troops. Well, I think yeah, it was at that point of CGI where it was mm. just about becoming like yeah. acceptable. Yes, because before that it was models, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, um, Which I think models are better personally. Yeah, I got go back to a Star Wars episode. Mm. What special effects in your opinion hold up better, Starship Troopers or Phantom Menace? There's two years between them. Oh, the CGI of Phantom Menace. Is dated, definitely. I thought this the scenes I thought looked bad weren't CGI scenes. They were um, just budgetary reasons, really. I think like stuff when like the pod thing crashed. There's a couple of dodgy shots where I was like, ooh, but the CGI didn't really. I wasn't like, Ugh, that's terrible. I thought it dated really well, to be honest. I was quite mm. surprised. I was quite surprised. Pacing and stuff, you could tell. It's a long ass yeah and part until we get to the. That's what shocked me, actually. I'd forgotten that it really is about these fucking kids going through the academy for a yeah, long time. Yeah, it's a loss time. of innocence, isn't it? It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it works when you get to the end then, doesn't it? Because yeah. you've been on this real fucking Rico, as shallow as he is as a character, and as, that's on purpose. He does have an arc. He does go for yeah. it, though, because he doesn't want to, as we're finding out in these opening scenes, he's there for basically to, to stay with that really hot girl basically yeah. he doesn't and she can't even explain it to his dad can he why he wants to do it whatever and no, they call him out and they're like that's that girl of yours she's going to hot in a uniform yeah but she's going to fuck you <laughs> up of course yeah. she is yeah you got 35 percent rating in maths mate yeah. that's, that's not where i want to go dad because he's essentially <laughs> she got 97 you're 35 because uh, although the actor might be 25 the character's supposed to be like fucking 17, yeah, 18, yeah, isn't he? Like, you can't tell me what to do, Dad! <laughs> like he's a six foot two, but like a brick shit. <laughs> <laughs> In all fairness, but let's, we need to just jump back a little bit and go back to the classroom scene. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because Rancher <coughs> gives this speech and it basically gives you the background to the society they're living in. He says, let's sum this up. This year we explored the failure of democracy, how the social scientists brought our world to the brink of chaos. We talked about the veterans, how they took control and imposed a stability that has lasted for generations since. You know these facts, but have I taught you anything of value this year? He turns around to a student. Why are only citizens allowed to vote? 
student replies, it's, it's a reward. It's what the Federation gives you for doing federal service. And Brad Tech is like, no, no, something given has no value. When you vote, you're exercising political authority. You're using force. And force, my friends, is violence. The supreme authority from which all other authority is derived. Naked force has achieved more throughout history than any other factor. The contrary opinion that violence never solves anything is wishful thinking at its worst. People who forget that always pay. And I kind of agree with him. Of course you would, you fascist. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that then, mate? I bet that. The only trouble is violence begets more violence. If you're the person... So you're, the... you're stuck in a cycle of mm. violence, and like this film, yeah. they're stuck in a cycle of violence against the bugs, well, it's, it's, and they're recruiting yeah. ever younger and younger people into the army. Well, the issue you've always got when you're trying to get people to sign up for a volunteer force is if you're taking lots of casualties, people aren't so inclined to sign up. The British Army found that out in World War One. Yeah. After the Somme, conscription. The trouble is, if, if you're a hammer and you see everything that needs to be hammered, you see if there's a nail. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that... Um, I forgot my point. And that's terrible for a podcast. <laughs> I apologise deeply to everyone concerned. Uh, oh, we should I think, oh, yeah, we're right. Yeah. So, okay, so, yes, he's got a point. Force does achieve things if... You're on the side of the force. Yeah. Mm. If you're the person on the receiving end of it, well, it's not working that well for you, is it? No. It's always going to come back to bite you on the bum. Yeah, I guess. Well, as, well not yeah. in the Federation's case. It's no, but every other civilization has fallen in history, hasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Even the Roman fucking Empire fell. So do you think the American Empire is going to fall? Of course fall it is. Eventually? It's is falling it? around them, but yeah. you don't know it yet. Mm. Wow. Dark times. Yeah. New world uh, order, mate. Well, yeah. that's why PlayStations are such magical mm. <laughs> boxes of distraction. But, like, social experiments brought society to the brink of chaos. Well, aren't we living in a social experiment now, and isn't our society falling into the brink of chaos? Yeah. Only if you and think so, that way. And so is theirs, if you think about it. They could be wiped out at any moment by these yeah. asteroids that keep coming. Oh, yeah. Well, planetary yeah. defences are better than ever, Mike. <laughs> if there's a bit of storyline, I hate to be that guy, because I hate it when... I'm not going to go on a rant, but... My beloved girlfriend sometimes can be a little bit like when we're watching a movie, and she's not the only one who does this, but she might be like, oh, well, that wouldn't happen. Why would you do that? You would do that. And I, my argument to that is like, if you're watching action movies and things of that nature, it's like, oh, fuck it. All right, then. Let's make a realistic action movie. It'll be boring as shit. Yeah. The lead fucking actor, the lead character, will be dead in the opening scene. As soon as yeah. he jumps from something really high, both his legs will implode and shatter up through his fucking <laughs> ribcage, puncture his fucking spleen, and he'll bleed out on the fucking pavement before he's even got in a fucking car. If he does chase. live, he's going to be walking like a crab for the rest of his life. <laughs> and considerably shorter. So, the reason I've got... Off his I brought that up because some people argue online that how do those fucking asteroids get from the one side of the fucking Milky Way? Because it shows, doesn't it, a, a graphic of our yeah. universe, is it? How do They're they literally get... opposite ends of yeah, the yeah. physics beyond that is, is, is impossible. And my response to that is it's book plasma. Yeah, but you, we, we, don't, we don't know as fast as it goes. Yeah, you've got they were about to fire them shit. asteroids about a mm. billion years yeah, maybe, in advance. <laughs> and, yeah. may, and maybe they did. <laughs> Possibly. Unless but, they used a wormhole. Maybe they did. It's bug plasma. Who knows? Because they did have them big brain bugs. They're pretty clever. Yeah, yeah. you have a big clever one. Maybe they can sense a wormhole passing. Well, in the third one, and I'll reference it briefly because I'm, I'm actually a bit of a classic fan of the third one. Do you classic, think I should watch movie. these fucking sequels? Don't watch the second one, it's terrible. All right, then. I'll second oh, one, the is, second one, mate. It's I'll, just. This abs- is the time when you mm. have to get to Blockbuster and pay mm. four quid to rent a video. Oh, Me and my yeah. girlfriend, yeah. Starship Troopers 2. Yeah. And everyone heard about it. I was like, what the oh, fuck, man? Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Starship Troopers 2, Hero of the Federation. Yeah. Oh. Took it back, mate. Oh, my God. It's, it's terrible. It's made on a budget seen. of, like... On well, IMBD, I think it's got a 3.7. Something like oh. that, yeah. Is it just... It, basically, shit. there's no bugs. No. So the humans stuck bugs. in this sort of building. Right. All going slightly crazy because the bugs are trying to affect their mind. That's it. Yeah, you don't even see the bugs. I think you, you do. do you end. do in, on occasion because the squad has to get from one bunker to another yeah, and to, right. to get there through the bugs. Right. But it's it's the third one. At least has um, what's his face Johnny Rico back in it. Okay, I mean, um, but it's a bit of a budget. 
There's a, an actress who looks like a, a B-rate Lara Croft. What's her name? Angelina Jolie. Which is weird, in a way, because you're like, oh, that's Angelina Jolie. Oh, no, it isn't. You mean they couldn't get Denise back? No, oh. no. Or Ace, sadly. We'll get to him later. I like Ace. Oh, well. uh, but, yeah, and it's it's okay. There's, again, with... I think it might be Veer... Uh, no, it's not Veer Hoven. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he had a producer credit or something. But there's subtle undertones. It's basically... The, federa to get back the, to the Federation is like an atheist republic, mm. but religion's starting to creep through and they're trying to put it down. Uh, and then they realise they can use it to their own ends as propaganda to say, well, the bugs are Satan, right. basically, so they can get more volunteers. Yeah. So At least the third one's got a decent story. And yeah, there's, yeah, there's that subtle undertone. Very much like this film, it's, but it's just, again, not a big enough budget, not mm. a great deal of bugs. And, you are, and they get the marauder suits, which are more akin to the book. I was going to say, I only learned that today in... Whilst reading up on it a little bit, um, that people were pissed that in the book a big part of it is these robo suit things yeah. that give you soldiers extra powers and stuff. Because the soldiers in the movie are woefully under equipped. Oh god, it. yes. I forgot that. Like that's one element that I totally forgot, having not seen it in years. Um, and it was quite shocking actually watching it back. Like fucking hell, they're shit. Yeah. But it's on purpose. It's like. You know, that's the point of the story, isn't it? And in a way, like, well, we just keep... That's it. The thing wave is, after find wave. a way... You know, yeah. like, one or 40k, it's the Imperial Guard. Mm. What does oh, he yeah. say to him at the gate when he says when he says he's in... He speaks to the new ones and he says, oh, next time I see you, you'll, I'll be saluting oh, you. We'll, we'll get to this. We'll get to this later on. All right, we'll, we'll do more it. More meat yeah. for the... Yeah, more meat for the grind, yeah. But we'll get to that, because I've got... He's, that's that's a good bit there. I was shocked, but I remember... I was like, I'm sure I remember a lot more bug splattering. Like, <laughs> I guess it washed over me, age 16, right? Um, it is interesting that a lot of the sort of figures like that recruiting officer guy and Radchek and oh, there's a blind science teacher up. at the school, yeah, yeah. they're all, they're all, sit, they're all military veterans, aren't they? They've all been injured and fighting. physical scars to prove it. Yeah. yeah, but nice to see the disabled veterans getting jobs in this society. Yeah, man, and robo hands. Not like that guy you had to pick up in your van. He just left him. himself and his benefits cut, that guy with one leg. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, nobody else All did. the veterans here have got jobs. Nobody gave him a robo leg. No. Or a but nice what army desk job. Why is yeah. there no army desk job for him? Like, yeah, yeah, right, no nice, you know, 18K salary, nice... Yeah, recruitment income. office. But what, yeah. About, what about the poor s civilians that are injured in, like, a factory or something? We don't know about them, do we? No, we don't. But these the, are people, these are citizens. Yeah, right? only the citizens can vote. They have the sway in oh, society. Yeah, we got the citizens. Yeah, Mike, you can tell us about this. The right to vote. They're respected. Fast-tracked in education, healthcare, social security. Licensed to drive, carry weapon, and have children. Have children. Yeah. Ah, it's easier to get a license easier. to have children. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, so it's but Rico's Canada, parents, for example. They've got money. They've got money. Mm. But if you, imagine if you're a poor civilian, you've got no chance. No. And being a civilian obviously means you don't have the right to vote, so you can't change the status quo. No. But you can become a citizen yeah. by doing two years of military service. By fighting fucking giant well, insects. Well, the thing is, remember... At this point, they don't been, really know, no. do they? Well, they did, they've, they've been, been fighting for skirmishes against these bugs oh. for years. I mean, so that's where Radchak loses shot. his arm. He, he's one of the first oh, people okay. to land on yeah. Tandathu. Right. I read this in the comic. Oh, and this awesome. bug... They like realise these fuck. He discovers the bugs. Basically, he's one of the people that's there. Mm. He gets back to the shuttle. This bug gets him through the arm. He's half in, half out. Mm. Realises the only way he's going to get out of this is to slam the shuttle door, take his arm off. Yeah. That's how he loses his arm. Wow. It's a bit of backstory to Radcliffe yeah, yeah, in the right. comics. He is teacher yeah. warrior. Apparently, in the book, it's two characters, and in the movie, they were just like, ah, fuck it. Yeah, we'll get Michael Ironside to do them both. He's good in this, actually. I like him in this. Yeah, he is. He's but I read online, yeah, though. He is. I read online today, and this surprised me, though it does and it doesn't. The reason it is so vastly different from the book is that basically, this was a script that existed completely independent. It was. Yeah. It was fuck all to do with Starship Troopers, and then somebody was just like, oh, but this is a recognised thing this Starship Troopers uh, series we can just apply the character names and shit yeah and some of the it ideas kind of morphed into yeah morphed into what it became and then yeah. Verhoeven got hold of it and put his very specific twist because I bet you if anybody else made this movie it wouldn't be such a fashion it would be much more of a traditional hero's journey oh yeah, yeah overcoming yeah. the bugs but this is a weird like this whole thing is really him Really sticking his finger up to fascism. to fascism and Ameri and America, yeah. yeah, like um, really in a way, and like and it's disguised as this 
and I think the an we're just answering our own question as we talk as to why it wasn't a commercial success at the time, but maybe we as Brits saw it, and like you said, you were the perfect age seeing it yeah. at 15, but you obviously still have an affini affinity for it now. That it, I, I've fallen down a weed hole. Mm -hmm. The critics away. hated it. Yeah, that's it. it that's uh, what I'm it's got a 7.2 on IMDb. Oh, that's from the users. That's pretty respectable. Yeah, from, that's uh, very high, man. Yeah. Even any movie over five has got to be considered good because of how harsh people are on there. Yeah. In my opinion. I'd probably say 6.5. I, I, don't, I don't watch anything under that if I can. Everybody oh. recognises the fact that the act. I'm not going to lie to you, the acting in this film is a little wooden. Yeah. But it's it's this is like a B movie with a mm. budget. And you introduce yeah. this to a world yeah. and a society and how and this you know That's exactly what Robocop was. Yeah. Yeah. It's good that you said that as well, because the guy playing Rico, God bless him, he's a terrible actor. But he he was obviously picked because he looks perfect. He's yep. the Aryan fucking dream, yeah. isn't he? Really. Oh, God. Yeah. He's the Aryan yeah. Superman uh, and he's supposed to look seventeen, eighteen <coughs> as well. And from Argentina all the Nazis supposedly went but after isn't that in the book that's no they that mentioned that in the movie as Rico well Rico basically Casper Van Dien and they say to him how come you're playing an Argentinian mm. his response is to say well you know yeah he's an Argentinian of German descent he's, oh that's uh, his rationale yeah. in the book he's actually a Filipino yeah. yeah but Verhoeven obviously just wanted everyone to be as fucking alien yeah, perfect. but he didn't pick a blonde for thing you know but she's still Oh, I she might have a bit more Cameron. Latina descent. Well, Carmen. Yeah, Carmen. Carmen, Carmen sorry, Abana, yeah. She's more Latina, isn't yeah. she? But, she's... but she is insane. Like, stupidly beautiful. Oh, my God. I See, forgot for me, it's Diz every time. I don't know oh, if that's no, just... No, yeah, it was Dizzy's no, thought. Really? This is what we started this film. I like Diz. Her Diz. character, I prefer, yeah. but... Oh, and, and... In, in pure shallow looks terms, pff, no. No? Okay. Oh, she I'm looks like someone that. drew her, didn't she? <laughs> she looks like someone drew an anime beautiful girl like, in a comic book or something like the little. She's a bit too perfect for my life. No, my casting does go to car, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm but, not allowed see, this is how we, They're seniors, basically, and you've got this love triangle with Carmen, Johnny mm. Rico, and Dizzy Flores, who also, as my says, she's a bit of a tomboy, and she's on the football team with yeah. the boys. Well, she, in the book, she's a man. That's true, yeah. yeah. She can fight. In 2018, yep. Mike, she could be whatever she wants. <laughs> yeah, Mike, whatever she wants. <laughs> <as well. laughs> Nazi. So, Gammon. <laughs> so I should beat you up outside. <laughs> Blame Robert Island. Look Not all me. the advocation of violence. <laughs> the force is the ultimate thing, my friend. You fascist. <laughs> I was joking. Mm. <laughs> He's not well, listening. I am no. joking. <laughs> Don't mind to get beat up. <laughs> 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 no, not Mike, but like other people. Well, they're a racist fuck. <laughs> okay. Let's so, get back to the aliens. <laughs> yeah. faces. So Carmen wants to go to the fleet. She wants to fly starships. Yeah. First thing they look at is your maths final. And your oh, arse. I've got no, and your arse. <laughs> and, <laughs> and your lips, I'd imagine. Oh, uh, she's so fun. I forgot she existed, man. <laughs> I fell down the rabbit hole today. Like, oh, God, yeah. She was it, wasn't she, back then? Fuck. All right, yeah. stop drooling. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm going to wipe the drool off your book. 97% she gets, so she's pretty smart. And beautiful. Yeah. Oh. Rico gets 35% proven it's just all muscle with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we get introduced to Carl. He's Rico's mate. Bit of a nerd, weirdly. Mm. But for some reason in this film, we have psychics. Mm. Some kind of next stage of yeah. human evolution. And yeah. Carl is... What did he get? A psychic. Did we know his score or not? No, you never find a car score. Ah, uh, I wonder if he got 100%. He fucking manipulated yeah. everyone. There was at my school that got 100% in exam once. Really? Yeah. yeah. How many questions was it? Well, it was a proper exam, like two and a half hour exam, and he got 100% in a maths oh. exam. He definitely sucked off the maths exam. <laughs> I remember once he got 3% in a history exam. <laughs> <laughs> Three? Yes. <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> what, did you not turn up? <laughs> How can you get three percent? What did you basically? Write? I basically what happened. I hadn't been there for a couple of weeks. I came in. They did a he did a pop quiz, didn't he? And of course, I hadn't been there for two weeks. So I'm three percent. Excellent. Well, you'd have been in the infantry. I would have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would you be you? <laughs> you and me both. Well, I'm me as well. To be fair, it took me three attempts to get back. Unless one of us turns out to be psychic without realizing. Well, maybe. Because this fucker could control his... His wire, ferret? was it? His ferret, yeah. Can't go, do human. Go and rape me mum's leg. <laughs> and off it went. 
you get a, also you get a biology class which involves cutting open sand beetles, which are that like bit was three gross. foot long. That was an unnecessary um, scene. Carmen's there sort of bragging, he's like, oh yeah, I'm going to, oh, nerds are still a fly a starship like that, but sadly she can't handle a bug's guts in her hands. <laughs> yeah, I thought that, that that whole bit was a little bit unnecessary. I didn't, yeah. I didn't need to see the, the bug dissect. Yeah. I quite liked it. I didn't like I just, the I mean, it's funny, but where does it, what does it do for the story, really? And and where do those bugs come from? Are they alien? Yeah, they're bugs? part of the yeah. arachnid sort of little species. Oh yeah, they come crawling along later, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Yeah. They dig the tunnels. It's to show that the war has been going on for a while. Not right. a proper war, but like Ben says, skirmishes. Yeah, and capturing yeah. things. Yeah. I suppose this does all make sense now, because I kept thinking once it today, oh, they're very shocked by these bugs. Maybe they didn't realise how hard they are to fight against. What happened? They, they just underestimated how many did. there was. Yeah, pretty much yeah. they underestimated their def- mm. well, defensive capabilities. They thought they'd just be able to go in and just send nukes down the holes and wipe yeah. them out. They didn't think that they'd but be they, organised. And, and yeah, and they just took Well, maybe out. they did, and they weren't sure, and it was a test. And maybe it was a military-industrial complex mm. wanted to say, yeah. oh, your gear's random, well out of date now. The thing is, the mobile imagery is other people will be fine. Yeah. I yeah. wait to be fine. If you're, if you're a but at the end of the film, they do have bigger weapons, yeah. don't they? I wanted to ask you, Ben, as a... A sort of military uh, enthusiast. Uh, how did you feel about the um, the whole like the way our army works? Is like if you could fist fight the fucking captain or whatever his name, whatever rank he is. Like, oh, if you could fist fight me, yeah, then you're one of the gang, man. Like, no, you know, don't that do whole, that like, really. No, and, like snapping the dude's arm, like where he's literally the bone is protruding the skin. Like, yeah. No, that pain is in your mind. That doesn't uh, work like that anymore. <laughs> no, I know it doesn't, but I'm like, where do you, do you feel that that would be a good way to run it? You know, because well, no, doesn't I was, that just seem a bit daft? Because yeah, somebody really a lot harder could just what if someone a lot harder just knocked his head off his shoulders? Yeah. Uh, well, am I the captain now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, boys, <laughs> this way. <laughs> Yeah, because you could be a big dope who's really good at fist fighting. Yeah, and fucks the guy up. Oh. I think the idea is well, we'll get to that anyway. Today. Well, that's I think it's okay. the, it's school at the moment. It's to show. And then again, it. even the lieutenant of the uh, mobile infantry, where the decisions are made, he's pretty low down on the fucking. Yeah, he's got a platoon I mean. with him, a company it. at best. Yeah, it's true. But I guess the no point decisions. of that is to show the the totalitarian and yeah. uh, the violence. Survivor of the fittest. The fact that the speech you read earlier that, that force is the ultimate force essentially is like, look, make no mistake, I'm your teacher and your superior. I'm training you. But if I have to, I will genuinely... Even the woman, when he chokes her out, he's impressed yeah. that she takes him on in a fist fight. I know I'm jumping ahead slightly, but I like the fact the detail of you do see the bruise on her neck from yeah, the fact yeah. that he did actually fucking violently choke mm. her unconscious. Yeah, yeah. He chose not to snap her arm like he did the other guy, but she didn't get off like... Well, she mm, could, he could have snapped her know. neck like that. Yeah, yeah. So he, he literally took her to the point of snapping her neck and then pulled it back when she passed out kind of thing. And I guess the idea is showing that... <laughs> no, I'm this, the alpha dog. Yeah, yeah, this isn't a tangent. Trust me, this is related. Very short saying that I learned from the, my best mate's Indian. And um, you must have seen on television how chaotic driving in Indian yeah. cities is. There are no lanes or rules. Like, there's one rule in the highway code of India, just one. Might is right. So basically... Might is right. If you're in a little tiny car and there's a big fuck off truck coming at you, you move it the way. He's got right away over you always, just because the Nick, he's a giant truck, you're a little <laughs> car, and that just sort of works on down the line. Like basically, might is right, and that kind of applies, doesn't it, to uh, this sort of vision of how society should yeah, be? Yeah. Might is right. This guy has. Well, it's not much different to our world society at the moment, is it? I think, I think it is taken it's dialed up to a American level. It's a dialed up version. It's a dialed up to a level version, yeah. I'm just saying there are I very big I think in this society, you could make it on merit if you're a civilian. Yeah. If you did your service... Yeah. Well, you, you can make it on intelligence, can I mean, Rico you know? makes it to lieutenant, and in the later... Yeah, but how do you get intelligent? You need to have the education. You need to yeah, afford it. No, because you know, the Federation will pay for you if you do the uh, yeah, service. Yeah, I'm worried about you, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine, yeah. Mm. But if you're a civilian, you only, you've got to be a citizen, haven't you? So, but yeah, Rico might. makes it a colonel in the extended... Well, by number three, mm. he's a colonel. Yeah. So oh, he's risen awesome. to the ranks. Yeah. You know, he's because he's such a good soldier, had. though. Yeah, he's it? found that out about himself, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Well, the mm-hmm. thing is, Ben, he was so good at um, future version Football. of American football. I was going to get to that. He could apply mm-hmm. the exact same yeah. tactics to the battlefield. Exactly. Yeah. When fighting other humans, it should be noted. In that, <laughs> but we'll get to yeah, yeah. So basically, he introduces Xander, who's um, he's going to flee, and Carmen's sort of a sudden more interested in him uh, than Johnny because yeah, he's going to flee, and he wants hey, he wants to go to flee. I agree with you now about the bitch statement at yeah. this stage of the film. Yeah, she's a dick. Yeah. Because she blatantly, at the side of the pitch... Is flirting with While him. her man is... But not just flirting, she's literally, in front of the whole crowd, making a point to sit in front of everyone. Yeah. And be all like... <laughs> Are you going to fleet? I'm going oh, yeah. to fleet too. Oh, that's where I wish I was. Again, with mm. the lips never touching. <laughs> well, I think there was a deleted scene, actually, where they... Where she sucked his together. dick! Yeah, she oh, sucked together, yeah. What? Him oh, and Zander? Not at the side of the pitch. No, not at the side of the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was saying she sucked him up at the... That was why I did the joke. Uh, at the side of the pitch. No, later on. Oh, but she did buff him. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't surprise but apparently me. the uh, the test audiences fucking hated her guts to... I used to have that cut. I used to have that cut. I had an extended cut of this movie. and I, It was on copy and I can't find it. So I had to yeah. watch the cinematic cut. But yeah, you do see them later on in the film. In all fairness... Well, well... Is it post coital? It's 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 post clandathu invasion. No, I mean like do you not you don't actually see him fucking. No, you, sort of you see, see him, him basically like, lie down yeah, to fuck, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. and then it cuts. Yeah, they're both. But to be fair though, Johnny gets to. Although he's been dumped at that point, so he can do what he wants, can he, Marley? Really? Well, he does get to um to do Carmen after the graduation prom. Yeah, I was more on about when he does Diz. Oh yeah, that's yeah. But that's because he, as far as he's concerned, he's been kicked to the curb, and he's yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, he's I'd, right I'd probably think that sex is the last thing on his mind in that kind mm. of environment. In all fairness, I mean, apart from the mixed showers, which I am. Well, I don't know, mate. All the testosterone flying, he's been fighting bugs, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah but you also just watch your mates get torn apart. Well, there is that. As well, yeah. <laughs> it's. Uh, I do think it's straight. It's quite. Heavy-handed in the film, actually, his rejection of that Diz character. Mm. Yeah, like, I think he just wants Carmen the, more. He, yeah, he wants the. But it's it, it is a bit. It's but, sort of melodro- melodrama, they call it. Like, but so apparently, in the middle of this war, it's hinted in the extended cut as well. Mm. That Carmen's dad doesn't like Johnny because his parents are civilians and, and yeah. her dad's a citizen, and he doesn't oh, like on. Johnny. That's an extended yeah. cut feature. Rico, no. Rico isn't. It? Rico's parents aren't citizens. They're civilians. They're so they rich. haven't. So they haven't been in the service. No. they're just rich. They're just rich. Yeah. That's why he's looked down upon rich boy. Yeah. So you can buy your way. So they obviously were able to buy a license. Yeah, to yeah, have pretty much. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, that makes more sense to me now. And if you're poor, the only way to get those same privileges well, is to sign up. Sign up. We don't see anything about the poor in this film. Do we? Well, you do the the, the, the Hispanic the guy who joins the infantry platoon. Uh, uh, he's like in the shower scene which we'll get to he's like well I got into Harvard but dad said we couldn't afford it but if I serve the federation yeah, will pay okay. me so he's just looking at two years mm. he's into Harvard uh, he's not expecting a bug war to break out no. he's thinking might yeah. be a bit of peacekeping somewhere mm, that's the saying. thing until the bug war breaks out mobile mm. federal service yeah you might die but it's like being in the British army now that's yeah, what I was you saying. might die but at the same time, you might be stationed somewhere cushy, like Zagawa Beach, and you want to go on holiday. I told you this story before, thing. I think, when uh, when I basically dropped out of uni, I had to come back to Telford and back to reality, get a factory job, and I was working with a guy, and uh, he told me he was ex-military. He was my age, he'd already done his army thing, and cause he didn't last that long. Really. With three years, you can sign uh, before, then you have the chance um, to extend it as it goes on. So he'd done his army and finished and all that, and we, we were probably 23, 24 at the time. And, uh, and I was oh wow, straight away like respected him. Oh, really, you did all your shit like that, you know, awesome. Like, where did you go like, man? Uh, I was in Cyprus. And I was like, what? Oh, yeah, Cy- I was stationed in Cyprus, bit of time in Germany, back to Cyprus. I was like, Cyprus? Like, yeah. What war's going on? What are we doing? Oh no, no, it's not fucking, he's like, are you fucking stupid? No, there's a base. Like, so what? So you were just, you, what? I mean, I know you start to do stuff. They're still like they work six two every day or six one sometimes, depending on yeah. the heat. I can't they have the afternoon it. off, and then they they're back up again, do all the work in the cool of the day, and then 
I remember down. thinking, I could do that. Yeah. And then walk around saying, yeah, I'm ex-fucking services. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I know that's not the story for every fucking soldier. He must have looked out and missed out on the Afghan and all that. He, he must have he timed it just logistics right. Logistics core, maybe. Yeah. So he's, yeah. I think that was that he drove trucks and things. Oh, so he's, um, yeah, he's probably a logistics core driver. So he, he would have, but he, yeah, he'd have been like Germany, mm. Cyprus, I couldn't believe Canada, it. So that's... Anywhere else, really. Back to the story. That's what... The, most of these people are wishing for is yeah. in the reality of this story that yeah well, nice as, cushy posting inside well, get me two own. years then I, I've got a license to be a human basically yeah. then because I bet can you not get I don't know if they mention it but I'm sure we could extrapolate so in this universe if you haven't got is it citizenship or civilian citizenship citizenship then you can't apply for jobs or you you, you, know. you looked you looked higher so you're two week, two years of serving in Cyprus mm-hmm. in the sun. Buffing mm. Nate, buff, buff inside for Cypriot birds, Yay. and getting drunk most nights in the in the nice summer heat. Yeah, right. That that gets you a job easier than someone who's fucking just had a shit life and. Yeah, but the worst scenario is because it isn't two years; it's two years minimum. Or as as needed. As needed. So if, you could be in there for life. Yeah, but if there isn't a bug war going yeah. on, it's probably just oh, we might give you another year. Right. You know, yeah. if you're useful. If you use but if there's a war going on, you ain't getting out there. No, you're exactly. Not. If there's a war going on, all those grunts are, are as useful, if not, as all the officers, aren't they? Like you yeah. need as many of them, mm-hmm. focus, so you lot are going nowhere, and they've got nothing to go back to. I guess a lot of them. I'm sure if you were a bad, powerful parents, and they decided, oh, no, we need him longer than the two years. I bet your powerful parents could oh, maybe. Yeah. Well, if they were citizens, I don't Rico's parents. Yeah. Oh no. Sway. See. That's a subtlety that I didn't really get until I had to think about it afterwards from the stuff I read and it, from what you said makes it clearer now. Yes, his parents are rich, but they're still looked down upon. Yeah. Because they're not citizens. Yeah. They haven't served in the, the totalitarian military. It's like a military... It's a military state. It's a military it's, yeah, a military state. state. That's what I was trying to say. When you haven't got like an elected government, but it's the military... Well, yeah, they must have elected governments because citizens can vote. Oh yes, it does say. Or do they just vote for the same? They just voting for the same. Oh, it shows you. It shows you in the movie when the guy. Oh, the Sky Marshal, yeah. The guy has to step down, and the next yeah. bird just steps yeah, but, up. But it's, it's fair. It's Sky Marshal Deans who gets replaced by Sky Marshal to Hat Maru, a slightly plump mm. black woman. The trouble is, so this is the quality of the society. Very progressive. The trouble with the military dictatorship is, you know, millions of people's lives at the whim of one person. If that one person is insane. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, they, like I, think, Hitler, I think there's a what, council. There's, a, there's, there's not just one person. A, they're, they're the head. They're the sky marshal, but there's still a council. Do you mm. know that? Yeah, it's, in, it's said in the film and the oh. third one. Yeah, there's a council around the sky marshal. Yeah, can we just call a quick slash? I break? was literally about to say the same thing. Okay, and we're back. So, um, basically, after the prom, Rico, Carl, and Carl go and sign up. Carl, because of his abilities and his psychicness. He's recruited to games and theories, which is military intelligence. And as the recruitment guy says, oh, next time we meet, I'll have to salute you. So Carl is fucking fast-tracked straight up the ladder. I think he's a full curl or something later on in the film we see him. Yeah, well, yeah. No experience at all. Just literally a kid out of high school. A year later, full colonel. Just because he's got a bit of psychic ability. And he gets a sweet Himmler-inspired uniform. I tell you what. It's a smart uniform. It is pretty cool, but it's incredibly Nazi-esque, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that bit's a bit on the nose, isn't it? Where you just, apparently he was called, they called him Himmler something. Yeah, something like Doogie, Doogie Himmler. Doogie Himmler, yeah. because yeah. he plays, do, does he play somebody called Doogie? Yeah. Doogie Hauser, is it somebody he plays? Mm. Yeah, something like that. So him, Doogie Himmler. Yeah, it's a bit on the nose. But it does, I can't deny it. You can't deny it. That's one thing about the Nazis. Fuck them, evil as shit. But, I mean, Hugo Boss, I yeah. mean, come on, their uniforms were... Sorry, I don't like them. They're better than ours. Yeah. Ours was shit. Yeah. But we won. Yeah. <laughs> Brexit! Beat him up outside! <laughs> <laughs> Just use a dress code. That's all I'm asking. Just <laughs> abide by dress code. Well, I should never have brought it up. <laughs> What's next? The, basically, the recruiter, <coughs> he's got one arm, he's got a robotic arm. Yeah. His other arm. Some fucking spiffy robotic arms. In this I movie. love me some robot arms, yeah. man, and they are they do look good because yeah. they look chunky. Yeah, they look like they could punch someone to death yeah. with them. Now they're sort of because the CGI is so good and prominent. Now they tend to be more flimsy with lots of space in between them to show off the effects. Like, yeah. 
Do you know what I mean? I look how skinny and thin my hair, but these are just big, metal chunky. Blows. We've put metal over a human arm. <laughs> this is a silver infinity gauntlet. Yeah. I'm gonna beat someone to death with but it. Yeah, exactly. It looks a bit like Hellboy's fist, mm. doesn't it? But the robo. Like, if I fucking punched you with this, mate. Yeah, I could punch a boat to death with that fucking fist. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, <laughs> literally. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Like, um, but he's got. Uh, legitimately has in real life the actor has yeah. no legs and the arm was fitted but he's got no legs well and, in um, the industry in any of these type of war movies uh, amputees get work because it's much easier for the special effect yeah. to dress up the guy with a leg missing in the uniform and show him post chopping yeah. writhing around like ah, with his stump so yeah but this dude gets not just a, an extra role he's a prominent which is cool for him, man. Yeah. Only lost like two legs, and now he's yeah. a, he's in a major movie. It's awesome. Um, Carmen joins the fleet, oh, and he says like, "Oh yeah, you know we need all the pilots we can get." And then yeah. Rico says, uh, "He goes, uh, what are you, sir?" And he's like, "Infantry, sir." And he says, uh, "Good for you, sir. Mobile infantry made me the man I am today." I and then he swivels around, and you see the missing legs. Yeah, we'll <laughs> and Rico, out, then. Rico sort of looks at him and thinks. Mm. You can always see it in his mind. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the acting or he's like, I've made a mistake here. I would, yeah. I would just shrieked and ran. Yeah. <laughs> his character's like, ah, I'll be okay. I'm great at the football. <laughs> With a three six flip hold, you can win. I'm beautiful. I can't die. He does get a sweet scar later on, though. Yeah, good on him. Yeah, I think he does okay in the movie. So, so the three leave the recruiting office and make a them to always be friends. Even though they're likely never to see each other again, stationed millions of light years away, mm. Rico goes back home, falls out with his parents, because <laughs> you know he's been a teenager. It's very Luke Skywalker. It is. Actually. It is. Yeah. I just want the power converters. And you know his dad tells him he's cut off, and his mom says you just joined up because of a girl who wants to look good in uniform. Which she does. Well. <laughs> She'd look good in a fucking bin bag. <laughs> not in a weird serial killer way, not dead. <laughs> it's a saying, isn't it? Yeah. She could wear a bin bag. No, I'm just saying. Sorry, um, I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he says goodbye to her at the uh, the depot, mm. the transport hub. And she's a little lukewarm at this point because he says, you know, I love you. And she says, <laughs> and he's like, go oh, on, just say it. You know, and she does eventually say it and mm. get the feeling... Maybe she's already. Her. Maybe she's By already today's thinking, standards, that's hashtag me too. Yeah. He coerced me into saying well, I love you. I think she's thinking, well, I really want to be a starship captain, and he's just joined the infantry. Mm -hmm. There's no way on earth I'll yeah. ever be a captain if I'm dating a mobile infantryman. Exactly. But he's so hot. Yeah, I don't think she's that bothered. Mm -hmm. Later on, she is there, like, you look good. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, he goes, she goes to the fleet, and he goes to the mobile infantry training camp. At this point, you get the federal network cutting back in. You got some MI soldiers interacting with kids, showing them the rifles. Yay! Hey, look at this. Yeah. Um, I noticed something. I've watched this yeah, film a lot, Go right? On. And I'd never noticed the rifles have got no sights on them, <laughs> and no oh, one. Is that why everyone's so <laughs> shit? <laughs> and no one fires it properly. They're all firing, and the butt of the rifles in their um, bicep area. Mm. It's not in the shoulder. So he's got no sights, mm -hmm. and they're firing it wrong. <laughs> but is that because though it's a Hollywood designed? No, it's um, it's based on a, a Ruger G14 Mini 14 bullpup rifle. It just bulked out for the uh, okay. futuristic look. That means nothing to me. <laughs> yeah, but what I mean it's is a that... rifle that's made by Ruger. A bullpup is the design. It's basically the magazine yeah. sits behind the trigger. Mm. So you've got a shorter rifle, but because the magazine is sat right at the back. You've got a big barrel length, so it's just as accurate as a longer rifle. Mm. There we go. So the American M16, for example, the yeah. magazine sits in front of the trigger housing, so you're not using all of. You've got a long barrel, but this yeah. one, but it's a longer weapon, so it's for street fighting basically. Can I just say when they're showing the kids the weapons, I I, I immediately thought of that. Who is America? That mm. Sasha Baron Cohen. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what man, making that yeah. video for kids? Yeah. A little teddy bear with a gun hidden inside. Yeah. Ooh. I can imagine that in this society. Yeah. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the same universe as Robocop. It's just a year 21. I have all the social experiments going wrong and it's just yeah. set on head. Yeah. 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 I read it was apparently a hypothetical uh, universe where the axis of evil won the Second World War. Interesting. Oh. Makes sense. Mm. Yeah. You're so Aryan... Mr. Rico. 
And then you get a crime and punishment section, live execution. Oh, yeah. A murderer was sentenced today. Execution, no net, all channels later on. I'm thinking the courts aren't good in this universe, are they? In this reality. Well, Not if you're a civilian. I mean, what happens to this guy? I mean, is he tried by the judge? We just say he's tried and sentenced. Yeah. Is he, he tried the sentence in one in one go, or has he had the trial, been found guilty, or is he just like you're he a murderer? There, he's just like you're a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> and he just hangs his head and he just. It's hard to say. The Nazis were on trials, trials were they? they? It's essentially what would have happened though, because the Nazis were a military political. Yeah, power, they didn't have they? trials, did they? They just shot them in the back of the well, head. Yeah. Well, they, they did have a trial. There was just judges and things like that. They had a trial, but they'd have been Nazi judges because only a member of the party <laughs> yeah. to be a judge. All so right, then it was fixed. But... Yeah, if you if you've been done for sort of Bolshevism, then they're just going to shoot. Yeah, you that's what I mean. So I, I, think, I think the officers are just going to order that, aren't they? The general's just going to go. Oh, yeah, we've had a few people, you know, been seen hanging around with socialists. We'll just kill them. Yeah, well, send them to a concentration camp. Get yeah. some work out of them. I saw him uh, stroking a bug behind the ears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 he saved a moth. <laughs> <laughs> um, then you get a psychic advert. Basically, are, are you psychic? Come on, come on, have a go at these studies. Mm. You're getting games and theory. You're like, Carl, you'd be mm. swanning around in a fucking sweet trench coat, being promoted yeah. to full curly. Yeah. Sending millions to their death. Yeah. yeah, but hey, you're psychic. <laughs> not that psychic. <laughs> no, obviously not. <laughs> and then you get some news. Uh, they're a bit Mormon extremists or slash colonists were wiped out by arachnids as they this. set up a Mormon Fort Joe Smith in the arachnid quarantine zone. Mormon extremists. So this ties into later on when in three we'll reference where they say that the Federation is an atheist state. So these are Mormons who are pretty well. They're, you know, they're not extreme, are they? But they've got some weird beliefs. But anybody that isn't part of your belief is extreme. Yeah. Isn't it uh, sort of representative in the movie the fact that the. Um, the powers that be are as interested in psychic abilities and the possibility of it. Is that a sort of reference to the Nazis and their occult? Uh, that could um, be. Yeah. You know, their occult leaning. Or the CIA's um, remote cyber yeah, spy yeah. remote viewing thing. No, there are legitimately psychics. It's being proved. Mm. It's like some kind of next stage of human evolution. Well, the first thing I do yeah. with that as a government and a military is jump on that straight away, isn't yeah. it? Weaponise it, of course. Think, think all those psychics might be able to see what a clusterfuck the invasion of Clandathi was going to be, though. <laughs> mm, that was a bit of a PR disaster, wasn't it? I think it was Carl's fault. Shouldn't have been like, Fucking hell, Carl. Should they? There's always no. that <laughs> meme. Cameraman should have turned away, shouldn't he, and just filmed No, he was too busy. I'm going to get a fucking award for this. Uh, he should have filmed the sky or something. Or like, oh, look, spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> Getting blown apart. Uh, yeah, but no, instead it was like... <laughs> <laughs> so then we go to cuts to the... Um, the, the boot camp, isn't it? And you got Drill Sergeant Zim strutting around, everyone's in their little Nazi recruit mm-hmm. uniforms. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, who, th- who here thinks they can knock me down? <laughs> and that big fucking dumb fucker what? just gets the shit kicked out, he's got his arm broken. Oh, I love that bit. Yeah, <laughs> Medic! <laughs> yeah, that's what it, it's, it's a running it's, joke, isn't yeah. it, in the movie? Medic! <laughs> oh, um, man. I think I think my arm's broken. No shit, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he goes, "Are you okay, son?" He's like, "Sir, yes, sir." But I think my arm's broken. <laughs> you think? You think? <laughs> Three times think... his fucking size, you daft prick. Then doesn't he say like, "Pain is only in the mind" or something like that? <laughs> yeah. and give us some quote. Well, he was the Kurgan. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, D- Diz arrives. She decides she's then going to take on the drizzle. Dorico's not happy. She's rocked up, though, is he? Mm. No. He doesn't... He he's thinks he's stalking There might be a bit of weird stalkery thing going on here. In yeah, all fairness. but he's doing the same to Carmen. Well, ironically. Yeah, but in a more indirect method. Yeah. I mean, I know they are going... They are dating stuff at this point, but... You know, he yeah. did He did go for her, didn't he? Of course he did, because she just... Yeah, I think she and he does the same thing, and he, he's having to go, uh, thinking, hypocrite. Mm. Yeah. But um, she puts up a decent fight against him, but yeah. she gets choked out. I think we mentioned that before. Big yeah. bruise on her yeah. neck. Um, you get Ace introduced in the in the queue. Uh, Gary Busey's lad. Yeah, they're eating that pink. The, this looks really nice. Actually, that things. pink goo stuff they're eating. It looks like it's Angel of Light ice cream, doesn't it? I don't know, like a thick I, Angel of Light. Actually, it looks like pink no. mashed potato. Either way, it looks fucking nice. <laughs> I don't know about it. Pink um, mashed potato. I'll do that for Christmas. <laughs> you find, uh, just cut your finger while you're doing the match. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> It'll go pink. <laughs> I hope I haven't got monkey age, guys. <laughs> we'll all find out soon. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, <laughs> everyone. Uh, AIDS. <laughs> it's so. funny though, it's been 20 years. It's at South Park, eh? I've got no immune system anymore. Please don't sneeze or cough. <laughs> yes. One of my favourite scenes of training is where Ace gets his hand skewered by a knife courtesy of Sergeant Zim. That's a good so, scene. Because he's shit at it. Everyone yeah. else is good at it, apart yeah. from him. He can't throw a knife for a country boy, which is strange. Mm. Yeah, but but well, you don't... You, you know, when it's time to... Oh, we've got to go and kill the beef. Kill the cows, you know. Time throw to, a knife at yeah, it? Yeah, you don't go... <laughs> Here's a bag of knives. <laughs> Just skewer it slowly. <laughs> we want to taste its fear. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's 17 knives <laughs> and it's <laughs> still not even fucking on its knees. <laughs> what the fuck? There are easier ways, Ben. <laughs> I was thought, you know, being been a country boy playing the violin, you'd have thought maybe you'd do a bit, bit of knife, knife throwing. axe throwing, that knife throwing, something like that. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, he's shit at it anyway. Depends what country. And he says, uh, what, what do I need my, I don't, why do I need to throw a knife? Uh, I've got a nuke. We find it like little portable nukes, which are yeah, kind of cool. And he says, all you got to do is push a button. And just put your hand on that wall, trooper. He's a bit reluctant at first. Yeah, well, of course <laughs> he knows what's coming. Yeah. Put your hand on the wall. <laughs> I'm not saying he's not right to be reluctant. <laughs> and then yeah. Zim just knife out into the other guy, into Ace's hand. <laughs> the enemy cannot push a button yeah. if you disable his hand. Yeah. But medic! Not, <laughs> medic! Medic! But at what point? He just walks over and just rips the knife yeah. out. <laughs> Isn't that the last thing you're supposed to do? Yes, to there's very poor first aiding you. skills being taught in Urban Infantry. He doesn't care, does he? Do no. not pull the protruding object out. Yeah. Yeah, basics. Oh, well, he don't give a fuck. He wants Ace to die. But Ace's hand is fixed very quickly. with oh, the, it's the future. Yeah. So is that guy's broken arm. He just barely has any time off. Very true. He's just got this weird plastic cast just some floating goo inside. Yeah. Next thing you know, his arm's fine. Well, we yeah. see that goo rebuilding... Uh, Johnny Rico, Rico yeah. Story yeah. Later on, which is pretty cool. It's sort of yes. weaving, like, it's like it's knitting flesh. It was cool. Mm-hmm. No robot mm-hmm. inside, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so they're in the boot camp, and Rico's messaging Carmen, and you get the feeling that he's messaging her, and she ain't replying. Mm, yeah. It's a bit of a one way thing. No, because I don't think because she's necessarily doesn't like the guy, it's just she's her career, she's got actual fucking exciting shit going on. And let's face it, she's not, she wants to fly a starship. That's pretty Studying. safe in all terms of things, isn't it? I mean, well, it's, I imagine she's, got more chance, she's got more chance of surviving the mobile infantry on the ground. Well, exactly. And I imagine she's got to study a lot harder, like more complicated, like, you know, like, study, study. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, he's just I mean, learning all, all physical the skills. He's point and shoot. Yeah, he's yeah. learning physical skills. With she's no learning sides. No sides. <laughs> she's doing complex fucking yeah. computations and, you know, uh, mathematical workings out. She's probably got to understand all sorts of physics and things like that. You know, she hasn't got time to be. I can't be making silly little videos for you. No, I'm not going to show you my tit on a video. <laughs> you fucking play it in front of all your mates. Do you know what I mean? I'm no, I'm not. Johnny, will you fuck off, Rico? <laughs> you know, for funny, you sent a sudden nudes, didn't you? Yeah, of course he did. So yeah. please, please send me a picture of your tits. Please, please. Oh, fuck off, man. I'm learning to fly fucking Star Destroyers. Half a I million could... tons of fucking spaceship. If I play my cards right, I could get a job with the Empire soon. I could fucking transfer over to that side of the galaxy. I could be working directly under Darth Vader. And what are you going to be doing, Rico? Sucking off bugs. Fuck <laughs> what looks better for a career? Dating another officer or dating a grunt? Yeah. At the end of the day. Well, she's going to be promoted if she dates a grunt, no. is she? And as they say, mobile infantry and fleet don't mix. Yeah, yeah but the last laugh is on her because Johnny turns out to be the fucking. The Mac Daddy? I'm trying to think of a good metaphor. He turns out to be the Jesus of this uh, universe. The, the war Jesus, the army Jesus. <laughs> war Jesus. Yeah, he's war Jesus. He wins a lot of fighting and stuff, and I'm sure he's more respected. You know, mm. I'm sure she's got no problem buffing the Johnny Meister, is what I'm saying. Oh, when he's an officer, of film, yeah. That's what I'm saying. At the end of the film, he's a decorated, he's not just a grunt, he's a decorated grunt. Like an awesome grunt, king of the grunts. Yeah. Like his teacher bloke who, you know. Red check. Yeah. Bless him. With his yeah. robo hand. Why did he wear his robo arm when he was teaching them? Just I'll give you an. In- do you want to hear a, an interesting 
well, I noticed it on the rewatching. Mm. In the classroom, his arm ends just above the elbow. Yeah. When he's got his robo arm on, it the robo arm comes up to just below the elbow. So they grew some skin back for him, obviously. Ah, that's a bit of a continuity error, mm. isn't it? But hey, we'll forgive these things. Um, I did like how he used his stump as an attention grabber in the classroom. Yeah, because sort of, you hey, know you. that made her so fucking uncomfortable. If you did that to me as a child, I would be traumatised for life. <laughs> mm. I'm not, I've got nothing against amputees, but come on, if he goes and fucking plunks his stump on my shoulder... To get your attention. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. <laughs> oh, 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 you. And it wasn't like a tidy, you know, like real life stumps are like tidy, you know, mm. sort of like a sausage tied off at the end, don't they? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> you're right, they're rounded, I know what you mean, they're, yeah, they're yeah, rounded. Yeah. <laughs> they made them look more sort of... His palatable. Was, yeah, his was all fucking savage and lumpy. <laughs> like, ah, it was gored off. Well, it, it was. by the door, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, look at it, all smashed and wobbly. And he just goes and sticks it on the hottest student's shoulder. Were you, were you, were you distracted, love? Poof, how would you feel now? Ah! <laughs> Whoa. No, I found about them. Yeah, that was the fucking rankest bit of the film for me, when he did that bit, when he did that. <laughs> Mind all the heads exploding and all the gore and all that shit. And the brain like, sucking. Yeah, none of, oh yeah, that bit's a bit. That reminded me of like old school um, brain dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter Jackson's, you know, first few movies. Uh, yeah, he really did actually ingest the human mind. Now, do they take that further in the expanded universe? Because I thought, well, if it's ingested a human mind, will that mean it now develops some sort of human? No, he's, he's, or yeah, they want to learn link. about us. They want to find mm-hmm. out where Earth is. They want to find out the battle plans and stuff. Right. So they're trying to capture high-ranking officers to suck the brains mm-hmm. out. Wow. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. Where were we? So Carmen gets her first taste of flying. She's having a... It's a the comparison to the training is that she's just joyriding shuttles about. Mm-hmm. And um, Rico is getting the fucking shit kicked out of him in basic training. There's a bit of a comparison, mm-hmm. isn't there? Mm-hmm. He should have got better than 35% on his math. Well, he should, should have should have studied on it. Um, she gets her first taste of flying a starship, the Roger Young, and guess who's shown up as her instructor? Oh, yeah. Mr. Creepy Bollocks himself, Fucking who two minutes ago was the high school football star, and now he's a fucking... Now he's an instructor. Officer. Junior instructor. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, back to Rico, and his training's going well. He gets made squad leader with Dizzy's help, does the football move, the 3-6 flip hole, or whatever <laughs> the fuck it's called. Woo! Yeah. They make up, they're friends now. Mm-hmm. And then um, Carmen sends her only message to Rico, a dear Johnny, if you will. And yeah. uh, it's a dumping message. Mm-hmm. Of course. Um, I want to go Korea, I want to fly a ship of my own. Really like it over here. Because let's face it, she's seen the wonders, you've got Jupiter in the fucking background. Yeah. She's seen the wonders of the universe, and he's firing a rifle. Mate, it's back to our, our favourite fucking entertainment show in history, The Mighty Red Dwarf. Yeah. It's Lister, Kachansky, yeah. Todd Hunter. Yeah, yeah. Totally it's is, exactly mate. the same thing, yeah. man. The fucking officer class mm-hmm. comes along, fucking yeah. woos your woman, and then, you know, as much fun as she had with you, she knows you've got no future. You might be fun, you might be able to the best sex, you might be the most fun, but there's no future with you. You're no. fun. Yeah. Oh, the amount of times I've been told that. Todd Hunter, <laughs> pantsing about with his, with his flappy hats. He's yeah. a chef. <laughs> no, that's not Todd Hunter. They're on about somebody else, aren't they? <laughs> that's Series 7 where he's, he's on about one of Kachansky's exes and he's slagging him off. He was so pretentious that we punts about with them floppy hats. <laughs> he was a chef. <laughs> <laughs> so he's cut to the uh, live fire exercise, a boot camp. Oh, it's a good scene. And then he's like, so he says, well, maximum score is 280. I expect you to beat it. I don't know why that particular squad should be expected to beat it. Mm. Unless there's something special about them. I think we should... Uh, we'll Just a motivation, I think. Yeah. So uh, Breckenridge, he's the big guy that is arm broken. Mm. They're in the drive fire exercise. He runs across another woman's, uh, another recruit's line of fire. He's like, oh, my helmet's screwed up. Uh. Mm. They think he's a real fuck up, don't they, this guy? He's a private part of the... He is, isn't he? The, uh, well, he says himself, doesn't he? I'm a big dude. I think he got yeah. 3% on his maths. Yeah. Like I, I don't think he got 35%, I think he got 3%. Um, Rico, for some reason, in the middle of a live fire exercise, says, hey, take your arm off a second. Yeah. Sadly, 
another quick falls over, pulls the trigger, and Brickenridge head just vanishes. Well, it doesn't vanish, but he gets a nice little hole drilled all the way through it, and his brains are everywhere. And medic! I was going to say that, he shows yeah, medic. Yeah, he shows medic. And then you just get Zim going, <laughs> you have a piece of Scott Command, Rico. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and he, and, you know, he he wants to carry on at this point, doesn't he? But he gets ten, he ends up getting ten lashes in public, mm. and it looks quite fucking painful. To be fair, it does. Mm-hmm. Can I assume there's probably a, a couple of weeks? I was surprised it wasn't like a hollow whip or something. It was just a, a plain a old bull like, whip, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was a fucking good old fashioned. Whoosh. There you go, you can't. You know when they used to flog in the British Army years, like in the 1700s, 1800s, the lash was going to kept Cat discipline. Cat nine toes. Yeah. Uh, you basically got a thousand lashes, it was effectively a death sentence. Mm. Oh. It was very rare that was given out, but even 200 lashes you'd be laid up for six months recovering with the menace of the bed at the time. Uh, Your back was just... just the they, they'd, uh, they'd only stop it if they saw a glint of rib, mm. and then stop it, let you heal up, and then they'd give you how many you had left to go when you'd healed up. Mm. Sounds lovely. Mm. So corporal punishment still very much a thing in this society. Yeah. As his dad alluded to earlier, you know, and mm. I'd rather take ten lashes in public in, cent- in public square than, than see you throw your life away uh, joining the mobile infantry. Yeah, well, get what happened though, Dad? Where are you, Dad? Oh, and look at Johnny Rico, he's fucking God warrior. And he's supposed to got the money as well, hasn't he? Hero man, oh yeah, inheritance. Yeah. So meanwhile, Xander and Carmen flirt in space and uh, only to have an asteroid intercept them. A bug meteor and shot out of the the asteroid belt by bug plasma. It's heading towards Earth. They have to do an emergency manoeuvre. Yeah, which puzzles me because she pulls the, the pops the old fucking emergency manoeuvre button out the out the desk. Smashes the glass with smashes the fist. Gla- Why would you have glass around that? But it's popping out the desk as it is, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. right? So you can't just accidentally touch it. Why would Maybe. you then have to smash the glass to do it? Yeah. I'm hurting my own hand here. Maybe you don't make that manoeuvre willy nilly. No, it must really take a strain on the engines or something. Yeah, it's like an yeah. emergency manoeuvre, isn't like it? Throw everyone out of their bunks and mm. like there's probably a lot of fractured skulls that we didn't see. Yeah, mm. possibly. You know, she might have killed. She might have saved the majority, but I'm sure a few fell out. I feel cleaner or something. Yeah, it's a mop in the floor. Around, yeah. Like, went head first into a bulkhead at 90 miles an hour and a fucking yeah. brain exploded all over the bugs. Grimdark. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, it's a grimdark society. What a hero, Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> God, she's so fucking beautiful. <laughs> Do you think the captain was a bit of a, a knock-off Captain Janeway from Star Trek? I think she came first, didn't she? The Starship Troopers, 97. Really? I don't know, to be fair. I've got no idea. I'm sure people will tell me. Unfortunately, yeah, I like the captain as well. She was yeah. hot. Yeah, she was alright. Unfortunately, they take evasive action and they but the, they lose the comms tower. Mm. Um, sadly, this is a bit catastrophic because the asteroid is heading for Earth, and oh, you presume God. that these ships go out on some kind of patrol to check for this. Mm. So the early warden, so that all yeah. the defences around Earth have a chance to line up and get prepared. Sadly, there's no early warning now, and that asteroid sails through those planetary defences, which are better than ever. Mm-hmm. And smashes into Buenos Aires, which is Carmen, Johnny, and Diz, and Mr. Radchek's home. Mm-hmm. And it's just fucking wiped out. Yep. How many dead? Nine million? Oh, it's, it? it's like the, the, the casualty rates are like nine million, and the numbers are just scrolling. Johnny takes it pretty well, though. Too, yeah, so. but he has, yeah. he's quit the MI just literally before this happens. He's calling his mum and dad, isn't he? Yeah, they I said he screwed up. Come come, oh, yeah, come home, I will be forgiven. And then everything goes dark. Oh, Johnny. it looks dark out there. Oh, is it rain? No, it's not rain. Mm-hmm. And then the transition cuts off. Everyone's going ape shit in boot camp. They're all going mm-hmm. to the screen. It's war. Mm-hmm. We're going to war. They all seem fairly, um, fairly up for it. In the book, his dad doesn't die. Does he? No, just his mom. His dad actually joins up for mobile infantry. No way. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm. Mind you, give in the book, given a choice in the fleet and the mobile mm-hmm. infantry, you're going to be a robot suit. I'm going for that. Mm-hmm. So Rico rushes back in the office. He's like, "Let me, let me re-sign up. Let me come back in." Yeah. The captain, who's from Breaking Bad, of course, he's mm-hmm. um, the, the cop, the father, the brother-in-law cop, DEA agent. He's in Total Recall as well. And in Total Recall. D 
Dean somebody. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Not Dean Saunders, he was a Welsh football player. <laughs> <laughs> he played for Villa, didn't he? He did. It would have been a better movie with Dean Saunders in it. You know what? It would have been. It would have been. <laughs> <laughs> crazy Welshman. <laughs> yeah, he says, oh, you signed your 1240A. Wouldn't be legal. Mm. Zim then sort of says, oh, is that your signature, Rico? Rico says, yeah, it is. Uh, I think he's meant to say no. We had this discussion last night. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm just going to agree. Well, that's what and the officer turns Zim his back, doesn't he? Zim wants him to stay. Zim wants him to look at him and go, no, sir. Yeah, exactly. But he doesn't. He's given out, hasn't he? So he's like, for fuck's sake, yeah. you idiot. Yeah, but I think that the fuck's I think when he says yes, I think the officer's mm. like, oh, for fuck's sake, you idiot. So he, that's why he turns mm. his back. Mm. So yeah. he doesn't see Zim rip up the form. He's like, oh, you do what the fuck you want. You know mm. what? Mm. It's another body, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure he thought that the, yeah. he would get the gist to go like, no, sir. That's what I thought. And me. That's the reading I took. Then he's like, oh, yeah. fuck it, are you? Well, look then, you yeah. dick. This is what I'm trying to say to you is, mm-hmm. it's not If you say this is your signature and you say no, it's uh, not a legal document, not legally yeah, binding. Exactly. You no, forged your signature. And I didn't have to rip yeah. it up or do anything dodgy because, yeah. like, oh, somebody else signed it. But I think we might be... Um, well, yeah, we're. Uh, I think we're not reading too far into that. I think that's yeah a reasonable assumption. Yeah. But anyway, apparently, according to the Federal Network, the meteor originated from Clandathu, shot out of orbit by bug plasma. I think it's a false flag. Mm. Well, it never happened. I no no, it happened. I guess that the Federation destroyed Buenos Aires for an excuse to go to war with the bugs. Oh, a bit like uh, the sinking of the wherever the ship was that started Vietnam. What was it called? Oh fuck! I don't know about the Gulf, Gulf of Tonkin. Tonkin. Yeah, the Gulf of Tonkin. We could also argue the Lusitania in World War One. Lusitania nine. Pearl Harbor. Yeah, Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor nine eleven. I think the military industrial complex aspect of the Federation needs a new war. Needs mm. to improve their weapons. They didn't know because well, we see at the end jumping ahead ever so slightly, but you see at the end that they super. Duper new and improved <laughs> yeah. weapons. But they had them in the fucking background. Oh, this fuck me, I bet they wish they had them. At the, this would have been a different film if they had them at the start, wouldn't it? It, it would. Been, yeah, yeah, fuck those alien cunts. Right yeah. up. We got, we got rifles that can take out half a fucking mountain. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> oh, well. Yeah. The Federal Council meets to discuss full mobilisation to destroy the arachnid threat. Then we have the Federal Network again, the propaganda, it's from the scenes of Buenos Aires, it's all ruined, it's on fire. You get some bloke, look at his crushed Labrador in the rubble. That's tragic. <laughs> so that Labrador was his only mate, who was like gutting, he, he looked genuinely upset, and I'd have been genuinely upset. And he, was like, and he says, the only good bug is a dead bug. The only good bug is a dead bug. Kill my motherfucking dog, bug. You don't kill my dog and not expect fucking revenge, is what I say. Um, you've got all those, that manically laughing suburban housewife as all the kids <laughs> stamp up and down on cockroaches. Yeah, yeah, that's a weird yeah. scene. And I was singing, were they real bugs? They no, they were fake. Yeah, I read that earlier on IMDb. They, like they were moving and then mm. I was like... Mm. I just think these emergency broadcasts that they, they have, all channels, all networks, so no matter what yeah. you're watching, you're watching a football game, all of a sudden it just comes on. And all of a sudden we're cut into the full-scale invasion of Clandathlon. Yeah. Well, that's what's going to happen when we go to war with Russia. That's what mm-hmm. You're going to be watching Countdown one afternoon and the, the fucking broadcast is going to be broadcast. Well, that was like 9-11, let's face it. Every yeah. channel you fucking put on was, nine, yeah. was was what was happening in New York. Yeah. Rolling news, 24-hour yeah. news. I mean, I, when I, I was on nights mm-hmm. during the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Now we just get in. Nothing else, I'm not the news on. First televised war. I was just, li- well, Vietnam technically was the first yeah. televised war. It was like, I watched people die in a Humvee at three in the morning. Yeah, it was There's night vision footage, this fucking RPG just hits this Humvee, and two American soldiers, one American soldier gets it on fire and then drops to the ground. I watched that live. Uh, it's mm. weird when you watch them, that night footage of like it's a, a zoomed out shot of a city yeah. and you see stuff going off in the distance, you know, like, hundreds of people just got yeah. maimed. Yeah. Um, and we're watching it. And the people live. on CNN were like cheering it, saying uh, the beautiful rockets. And, uh, yeah, I mean it's insane. You had Ollie North running round mm. in Vietnam in in, uh, in the Iraq in two thousand three. Bit of a running theme on the show, I'm afraid, Ben. But like, if a bit that Bill Hicks did that I do think you'd you'd appreciate. He was talking about the the first Gulf War, and uh, and he's describing uh, all these generals out there, and they've got all these weapons. And they bought them, and they're there to be used. And they literally got a catalog, and he does the whole bit, doesn't he, Mike? Where he's like, yeah. number uh, thirty-five, seven, whatever. You know, what does that one do? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> uh, 
what is this one? And then they're, they're, they've got these fucking rockets to use. We we bought them. We sold it. We got a deal. Oh man, the darkness. Yeah. The darkness of it all. Yeah. And then people call us tinfoil hat wearers and fucking, you know, oh fuck off. If you only go, people knew. You got no idea how dark it goes, but none of us want to admit it because <laughs> no, we all we want to live, as David Icke calls <coughs> it, the hologram. Maybe everything he says is true, but he's taking it too literally. Maybe it's just metaphor, like we said earlier. The lizard Saint brains are metaphorical. Saint Ike, I'm sorry to insult, insult him. But, uh, you know, maybe the hologram that we all live in, maybe it's more metaphorical than literal. It's Because like, we don't... Nobody... Your average... All right, my family coming round tomorrow for the first time ever, really. I'm hosting the family for Christmas, right? right. Wow, responsibility. And, yeah, right. Am I going to sit down with me dear old mama? And talk about the fucking adrenochrome and the, the <laughs> satanic ritual killing of fucking children. You'd be a lot cooler and, if you did. And the elites and the fucking Bilderberg group and the fucking Bohemian Grove. And the, I'm like, nobody no, wants to I'm hear gonna it. Be, look, yeah, nobody wants exactly. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to fucking allow that shit to be. Oh, you tinfoil hat wearing fucking. Li- Lay off the joints and get off YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Nobody wants to know. The Same truth is too painful. They'd rather, they'd rather hold on to the lie. Exactly. So there's no... Yeah. We're the last of bastion of truth, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> now let's get back to our movie review. <laughs> <laughs> so then we break now and we go to the full-scale invasion of Clandathu, the bug's home planet, apparently. Oh, dear. Um, we've got a fleet battle station, Ticonderoga, which is deep in the Arachnid quarantine zone. It's a staging post, and the fleet of the MI are preparing to go. The, rep- the reporter, who earlier on gets bitten in half, and yeah, is interviewing MI troopers. So we've caught up now with yeah. the, the opening scene. Yeah, basically. Um, Rico, Diz, and Ace are there, and Kitten. Mm. Who's the Kitten? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know why it's called Kitten? He's, you know, oh, here's a bunch of MI kids, they look like mm. eat bugs for breakfast, and you know, there's a bit of, oh yeah, we're going to fight, we're going to win. And then he turns back to the camera and he's like, yeah, but some say the bugs were provoked by our intrusions into their quarantine zone, and mm. Rico's like, no, I'm from Buenos Aires, I say kill them all! Yeah! Yeah! And then they all go get, well, they want, they want to go get tattooed in a little bit. But Carmen sees Rico on the ship. Mm. First time he's seen her since a dumping. He has to go up, he has a saluter. Mm. Oh, yeah, like, oh I should lose the hat when I'm not on Jesus. Oh, fuck off, Carmen, you know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Well, this is a bit I referred to earlier as how she does show her shallowness because he tells her she looks good, but she does a bit of a, like, well, <laughs> so do you. So yeah. a, just you're a piece of meat, essentially. Yeah. Rico, fucking grunt. You shouldn't be saying that to a superior officer, though, should he? Well, no, but, you know, she... Yes, maybe she is a bit shy. And of course, uh, Xander's nearby, because he's, he's pretty much a fucking shadow at this yeah, point. She's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, but if you had her as a girlfriend, you'd never leave her side, would you? I would literally He's not join. a girlfriend at this point. Like, would you if she was sew, my girl, girl. sew yourself to her? <laughs> <laughs> like a leader I, for the misfits, so yeah. just sew myself to my girlfriend. I think I would join a horrific totalitarian fascistic <laughs> army <laughs> to go and fight unkillable alien bugs just to be close to it yeah. if my girlfriend looked like that. <laughs> and if my actual girlfriend's listening, you are so much hotter than her and I would <laughs> definitely fight the bug aliens for you, you know that. I'd imagine she'd probably be a fleet officer and you'd be in the MI. To be fair. God, I hope she's not listening. I'm so nervous. Can we pause it? Because I need to piss. <laughs> God, I you survived in the MI. I've excited my own bladder. <laughs> so, yes, we're back. And um, so we, Carmen and Rico, seen each other the first time since they enlisted. Uh, of course, Xander's nearby because he's a fucking rapey shadow. Yeah. Mm. But a good guy. It's Rico time, assumes that they're having sex. Yeah, well, that's why she dumped me. She's got this fucking dude near her who she was flirting with at the fucking last football game of my fucking high school career. To be fair, he's got a reason. Yeah, yeah he's got a motive yeah. to believe. If I, mean, I was him, I would definitely. Stranger, he's just fucking rocked up next to his ex girlfriend, yeah. isn't it? And she's just dumped him. Yeah, I think it's implied, isn't it? That yeah. Together now. Rico basically says, you know, yeah, you know what? The MI doesn't make stupid troopers. Mm. Xander then says that rank isn't an issue, he's going to disregard rank. And they're a fairly even fight, I think. Mm. I wouldn't say that either so either one of them no, it's had an pretty, advantage. It's pretty mm. even. In the world of wrestling, they would call that 50-50 booking. Yeah. Nobody comes out looking like a pussy, but nobody comes out really winning. Yeah. So nobody loses. Pretty much. And they get separated. Yeah. 
And at that point, they uh, all decide to go and get tattooed together. Mm. <laughs> and it, the modern method of tattooing does seem quite harsh, doesn't it? Like, oh, I did not. Like laser. I used to have Was to, that less brutal than our method? No, I, I had um, five hours on Friday, and believe me, it hurt like a bitch. Well, you had more than... I bet you didn't have whiskey yeah. poured over it. Didn't have whiskey <laughs> no, poured yeah, over it yeah, either. That bit, I would have smacked it. As much as I love you guys, <laughs> if we were on a night out having the best time, we're so happy. And We've I'm all a death, it. sweet yeah, death yeah, of tattoos. And, I, and it's my turn, I, just... I go third, you, you guys have been, I'm going third, and you fucking tip whiskey on it. Our fun <laughs> night out is over. Yeah. Like, we're not friends anymore. No, <laughs> no. no. my brother's in arms. Jokes, yeah. I'm only going to shoot you in the back the second we land on Clandathan. Yeah, it's over. Because my arm is stinging like a bastard still. I'm not going to take that as a joke. But, no. oh, fucking Johnny Rico's like, oh, fuck, so much pain. Hardy, hardy, har, har. <laughs> Shucks, we're fucking Spice Marines. <laughs> I'm gonna slap you on the ass. <laughs> and it is not homosexual because we're troopers. Mixed showers, guys. Yeah, that's Mixed strange. showers are a bad idea. Do you know what I feel? I like the mixed shower scene? idea. I'm down for that. No, I, my feeling on that scene when it came up today, and it didn't help that my missus was in a mood with me and came into the room as the fucking... I couldn't believe it's like, as if God himself's having a laugh at me. Like, of all the fucking scenes, why she walked in on the shower scene? Like, like I'm what, watching something fucking... Oh. Anyway... <laughs> It is Ben's choice. It was Ben's choice for a movie. Uh, <laughs> 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 Curse you, Ben. <laughs> so, but my point is, uh, I get dramatically the point of it to show that society is at that level. That it's it's nothing to them. There is um, nothing remotely sexual to them. But it's a bit gratuitous in terms of actual filmmaking. The third like, one is more gratuitous in terms uh, of that. He doesn't get as much of it, but when, when he selects his squad from the Marauders. He's like hand picking the best robot infantry troopers and sergeants. And what, they're all naked. And they have to go into this gene mapping thing to link mm. with the machines. And they literally just stand there, fully naked, apart from this convenient little square gene mapping thing right, right. above their genitals. Right. But all the women are stood there topless, all the men are fully well, nude. Everyone knows that the genitals are the entrance to the gene map. You know, everything starts <laughs> exactly. with <my> penis. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Apparently, in the nude scene of the showers, Paul Verhoeven filmed naked. Did he? Yeah. Wow. Well, to make the actors feel less self conscious. I assume so. Or, or, or he just wanted to do it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody, we're feeling good and free and sexy on the set. Yeah. You know he was so You're naked. Well, I'm yeah. naked. <laughs> we all we are naked. naked. He was so enjoying. <laughs> he probably had an orgy <laughs> after. Hey, no, it's a cool. <laughs> Come on. Hey, we're funky. We're sexy. We're Dutch. <laughs> And action! Oh no, you have erection. We cannot show this. Would you like That's to my get problem rid with the erection? Communal showers. Um, Imagine having a oh conversation God. with a fit bird. I would just have a continuous bow. That's what I mean. Just I'm, the idea. Of, if I knew, I was like, oh, I can't believe we're going to go in the shower. Yeah. But, Girls, that'd be hard before but, I even got through the door. But, but if that's all you've ever known. Well, that's the point. That's what they're trying to say yeah. in the movie, isn't it? It's such a non thing that every it's. It's it's a gender neutral society, mm. isn't it? Do you think it's every purple bearded fucking fucking you. It's all you fucking liberal people's wet dreams. I was a fascist a minute ago to come your You're purple. both <laughs> <laughs> You're an extremist <laughs> That's the point no but Do you think kittens are transgender then? Who kittens? Kitten. The, the actor, the, the, the character Kitten in the film. The guy who's um He's got like he's uh, big long eyelashes, you must know him. Oh yeah. With big, very blue eyes. Yeah. He's like, I want to be a writer. Writer's got to write. He's asking everyone yeah. the backstory. Yeah. Well, no, I don't think it's implied that he's really... transgender. It might be implied that he's gay, but not... Well, his name's Kitten. What the fuck's that got to do with that? Well, it's an odd name for a boy, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's his last it's a bit, name. It's a bit... Huh? It's his last name. Oh, is it his last name, is yeah. it? It's a bit... Hello. He's, it, well, it's implied he's a sensitive... Mike, he's a sensitive artistic type and he wants yeah. to be a writer. <laughs> I don't know. I was just, I was yeah, just I maybe thinking too deeply into it. I don't think he's transgender. I don't think you said gender neutral society. I'm thinking. Yeah, but well, when I say gender neutral society, I don't mean everyone's fucking gender fluid. Uh, I mean it's just it don't matter. Boys and girls, no one gives a fuck. You're all meat for the grinder, anyways. Yeah, yeah, we're all meat for the grinder. We'll shower right. together, eat yeah. together. It's non-sexualized. Yeah. yeah. So the invasion begins <laughs> after some tattooing. Right. Uh, no, they they go in these pretty cool drop ships. They, they mm. swing it on arms and then drop down. The lieutenant there says, remember your training, and you will make it back alive. <laughs> yeah. Ironically, he's the first to die. So he forgets his training. He forgets his training. 
Oh, the training's a lie. Well, the training's bollocks. I think that's probably the more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I will get no into one knows what the fuck they're doing, do they? They don't, I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, uh, he also says, kill anything with more than two legs. Now, mm. I think the American army has issues with that at times. <laughs> <laughs> Your fleet's above the planet, all in quite close formation, which is a bit daft, but mm. you know, there's bug plasma coming up from the planet, and, you know, Carmen does turn around to her captain and says, like, you know, a lot of bug plasma there, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Oh, don't worry, military intelligence is going to be random and light. Yeah. I mean, and you can see on the screen, like, here I'm thinking, well, that's not random and light, there's a fuck ton of that, and you're all really close. Yeah. That ain't good. And then the ships start breaking up. They do, they start getting hit. You're seeing the troopers, they touch down on Kandathu, we get those cool rockets going yeah. off on the on the ships to signify they've landed and draw the ships down. They've got portable rocket nukes, which are pretty swish. Yeah. Love that bit. But they've got no discernible tactics. Mm. They just all run out the ship screaming. They get to that little ridge, which mm. is a perfect little defensible position for mm. that particular part of the line. Yeah. You assume they're all trying to keep together. They launch the nukes at them big bug plasma anus things that are going off. Yeah. So like basically that plasma bug is just taking a shit into space. <laughs> and I, this shot coming up now, right, right about now, is we've got Rico facing the camera. Yep. Valiant. Mm. And then behind him, you literally see, you see a hundred extras with their backs turned, legging it. If they all turned around and fired, yeah. Yeah. wouldn't it have gone a bit better? Well, yeah. yeah. That just shows a lack of leadership, lack well, of tactics. There's no tactics They'll at fucking all. Leg I mean, it. <laughs> it's like if we were out on the piss and I was like, right, we're going to get him, lads. Yeah. And I rushed him and then I'm like, come on! And I look, and you two are just sprinting in the opposite direction <laughs> up the street. <laughs> I'm going to... F- but they're very green, aren't they? I'm assuming yeah. the troops. I mean, they're very green, they're and they've literally been. The tactics are no loyalty. Kill anything with more than two legs. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. a tactic. But the thing is, it's like if you know, and you've been skirmishing with these things for I don't know twenty years. Surely you've developed something, and I mean, if if that was me, right? Okay, we're just going to form one solid line. Mm. Well, like multiple ranks. And the first rank's gonna fucking fire fully automatic, and then they're gonna drop down, and then the second rank's gonna fire fully automatic. The first rank and the second rank are reloading, the third rank is banging. There'd be a continual stream of fire. Mm-hmm. But it does Plus, say. They've got no artillery, mm. they've got no air support. Mm. It's just, it's almost like it's designed to lose. Yeah. But they do say that they didn't expect them to be as well organised. No, and the sheer numbers makes the. And. And they're bigger makes and them It could have been. You know, from powers above, just just send them out there and just see what happens. We want to yeah. learn. Yeah, it doesn't matter about it. the casualties. We want to know what. Mm. This is just a we're probing oh, yeah. the attack. We're probing the defences. Yeah. Well, that's it. But you're attacking their home world. You're also aiming to end the war in one swift yeah. stroke, aren't you? Mm. I take it the home world. That's it. We've won. That's human thinking. Like yeah. taking the enemy's capital city mm. is like we've won. Do you know what I mean? You ever seen that film Ender's Game? I haven't. I've heard of it. I've heard of it. That's Harrison Ford, isn't it, hasn't it? Uh, it could do. Book. Yeah, I think Is it, it might. fairly new? Fairly new, sort mm. of five years or so. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's about a kid, mm. these kids learned how yeah, to... Yeah, that's the word. Like, uh, play a computer game and they're killing the, uh, the mm. enemy, like... Mm. Uh, I won't give it away, the ending, but it's, it's a very good film. So, come on, right. let's get to this. So, um, basically, it all goes tits up. Ace, who's been made squad leader in light of Rico's uh, fuck up, let's say, loses his mind completely and mm. makes no decisions whatsoever. Like, Ace, what are we doing? Mm. Uh, <laughs> that's not what you want your fucking sergeant to say when there's a fuck ton of erratic warriors coming at you. Nope. And Rico sort of takes command a little bit, doesn't he? He's like, he does. kill them all, kill them all. The Hispanic guy wanted to go to Harvard, he loses his mind and rushes out and starts, you want some? You want some of this? Yeah. You want some of that? He gets ripped apart fairly quickly. Kitten's dead. Kitten, oh, the woman who wanted the babies, Yeah. Uh, she gets taken off in a bug hole. Yeah. Basically, it's a fucking massacre. Cameraman's still filming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that cameraman. Trying to win some maniac. kind of nature documentary award. He had a job to do, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, have been more, I'd have been more prepared to do that job if they'd give me a rifle as well. 
so I could ditch the camera if I had to, or maybe defend myself a little bit. Camera <laughs> rifle combination. Or a camera rifle combo. But he yeah. never stops filming. Never stops filming. Until With a big torch. That's the best thing. He's got this massive <laughs> torch. So he's making himself more visible. It's <laughs> <laughs> like brightened up on the battlefield, illuminated. Yeah. So at that time, the Russian army in World War One decided. Nice attacks are risky. We'll illuminate the battlefield and put all the spotlights behind their own men. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Kitten's killed and Rico is wounded in the leg and left behind as the general retreat is ordered. And basically, after it all goes completely tits <laughs> up. <laughs> Best way to describe the amazing and death. 100,000 dead in one hour. It all went tits up, yeah. It's a massacre. It's a massacre. Doesn't it say that? On one of the screens, like 300,000. Yeah, later on, I'll yeah. just go down a little bit more. We'll call it a day for this episode. Yeah, man. So, fleet officials acknowledge they underestimated the Iraqis' defensive capabilities. We made a mistake. We made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry, Sky all Marshal, sons are dead. Yeah, Sky Marshal Deans resigns. He's replaced by uh, Sky Marshal Tahat Maru. There's talk of brain bugs of a leadership cast. Amongst you, they're struggling to explain why the bugs are actually defending their own territory intelligently. Because they just think they're mindless animals, just pack instinct, herd like instinct, bugs. hive instinct. But because uh, you've got that discussion on the network where the, the two scientists and the one's like, I find an idea that a brain bug just offen- offensive. <laughs> yeah, he pronounces it weird. Offensive. Yeah. And the fleet limps back to the battle station, and it's like the fleet's pretty messed up in it. I mean, the stuff just like crash landed on the top of it. Yeah, it's very few ships are capable of actually docking properly anymore. And the casualties of the invasion is a moving screen behind Carmen and Xander walking through the ship, or past all the wounded MI troopers who, because the bugs don't take prisoners. There's not many wounded people. Yeah, she makes a point of saying mm, that. Yeah, she? and like, yeah, most of the guys who are there are wounded of missing limbs or hideously gashed. Because that body armor they issued might as well be fucking tissue paper. <laughs> yeah, you, it, you might as well just give them any body armor. It is up against giant fucking spikes, yeah. to be fair. But doesn't that remind you of the British Army when they first went into Iraq in 2003? Our body armor was woefully inadequate. <laughs> and then they had to rush out new designs. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like, I remember the first piece of body armour I got issued with, in the reserves, mm. remember, was basically US Vietnam sort of era flat vest. It was mm. hard plastic. It was like wearing a hard plastic corset <laughs> over your torso because there couldn't be a gap mm. in between at the sides. You had to really force it together. Mm. And I said, well, what's this going to do? It's just clunk, clunk. It's just hard plastic. He goes, well, all that'll do is keep you together till someone gets to you. So you got some spin. Yeah, basically. Oh. And you used to super glue your bits to yeah. glue back together. Yeah. War. Never been so much fun. War. Yeah, so it's like that body armor. So much fun. Yeah, because of the shit I got issued in the yeah. reserves. But when we went into Iraq, we were still using that stuff. Huh. Do you remember that game, Cannon Fodder? Yes. Yeah, brilliant game. Remember that song? War. Never been so much fun. Yeah. War. <laughs> Never been. Go to your brother, kill him with a gun. It was an impossible game. It was hard, wasn't it? I yeah. fucking loved Cannon Fire. Yeah. yeah. They should remake that. And you always used to get that one guy who lived for ages. Yeah. yeah and, and you'd, you'd be like, get you'd attached to him, though, wouldn't yeah. you? You'd get emotionally attached. Like, yeah. no, not you. Not you, Jones. Yeah, you've no. been here for three missions. Yeah, you start with Jules and Jops, I think it is. That's it. Oh man, that was good. It wasn't good. It was like general or something. What I used to do is the the favourite ones, you'd move to the middle, wouldn't you? Yeah. So Jules and Jops would survive. You'd move into the middle of that little four man squad you end up with. So, because the first guy's going to hit a mine, the second guy's going to get shot in the back. Yeah. Them two in the middle, they're fine. Yeah. It was like lemmings or worms, but. Yeah. A bit cooler, wasn't it? Yeah. Quality game. Yeah, so. The counts of the invasion list is 308,563. Fuck me. Uh, barely any wounded, and Carmen scans a screen for Rico, and uh, he's listed as a KIA. And she's quite upset about that, in all fairness. Well, she might be a bitch, but she ain't that heartless. No. Yeah, you know, she's not a psychopath, she's no. got emotions. No. She, she looks. So, but then we find out, and we'll end on this bit, that he's alive. Mm. And he's being healed in a tank full of green liquid with a little nanobot. A spider healing his leg. Be building. And then Rico, uh, Ace and Diaz come to see him and say, Hey, you're dead. You're <laughs> KIA, man. 
And he follows his message. Yeah. him he's dead. They're assigned to a new unit, and it's the Roughnecks. And we'll leave it there, I think. Yeah. We shall conclude next week with our. Absolutely. Uh, what's it called? Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers review. Sorry. review. A fun man of weed hole, I'm sorry. We've got the main brunt of the action to come next week. Yeah, man. So we're going to finish off with some weird news. Do a little bit of weird news on Full Alex. Boom. If you've been with us for a while, you'll know our movie reviews do take quite a while. Yeah. yeah. Five times longer than the running time of the actual movie, but anyway, <laughs> it's in depth, in, baby. In all fairness, it takes. This movie is like, what, two hours, 20 minutes? Yeah, yeah, so it's about five hours to write the notes, so it's. Um, <laughs> it's going to take us six hours to talk about yeah. it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. What's in the news uh, then, boys? Oh, oh, man. Man who sniffed his own smelly socks every day is in hospital with a lung infection. Well, no shit, sure. Yeah, I s did see this one, actually. <laughs> what an idiot. Did he have some sort of weird sort of kink? Or maybe not even sexually, just it was a weird habit of like, I like to sniff just how bad my socks are. Who knows? Well, he's regretting Mind you, it's no worse than the German manager who sniffed his ass. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, fucking hell. Yergi Love. Eh? Hey? Yergi Love. Yergi Love? Yeah, that's his name, isn't it? Oh, look. Joe Chim Lowe. No, oh, hang on. Well, you're saying it in English way, it's Joe Chim Lowe, but it's in Germany, it's pronounced Yergi Love. Well, just give me the German way. I just did, well, Yergi Love. Way. Joe well, Chim Lowe. Anyway, there look, this man from fuck me. Give away, he sniffed his own ass. Zhang <laughs> Zhang Zhou, I apologise for the pronunciation, in southeastern China, would smell his socks after finishing work daily, it is reported. He would return home from work and change into more comfortable clothes, but would reportedly sniff the socks he'd been wearing all day. As a result, he is thought to have caught an infection from a fungus that had developed in his footwear from his sweaty feet. Well, fucking hell. What did he expect, really? This yeah. this then spread to his lungs when he breathed in the spores. The moldy, man moldy spores. was admitted to hospital as an emergency case where an x-ray confirmed he was suffering from a severe lung infection. Wow. At least it narrowed it down. That's some CSI shit. Because you wouldn't admit to that necessarily, mm. would you? No. Hey, how do you think of this lung infection? I do sniff my own socks every day. Hang on, I just want to read that little bit there, Mike, at the yeah. end of the article. It says, uh... Foot fetishes have been known for many years, but a fascination with socks is less heard of. But earlier this year, a 21-year-old girl in America revealed that she had attracted a, quote, sock daddy. Wow. <laughs> who was prepared to pay large sums of money for her sweaty socks. Well, you go, girl. I say you feed upon yep. the fucking perversions Too fucking right. of the... Rich middle class white man. If all he's asking for is your sweaty socks and you fucking go for it, you make as much money as you can. Sock daddy sounds dodgy, doesn't it? Sounds like so got a name of our... with a sock puppet. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of my next album. Sock daddy. <laughs> Hang on, what's the first album called? Interdimensional Pink. Of course. Yeah, sock daddy's dead in seven. <laughs> Don't die, guys. Sorry, sorry. I recently did a first aid course, but I'm sure I didn't have to perform CPR. Does, your, does part of your first aid course he smoked too much weed? Did they teach you that bit? Because if they didn't, which I know they didn't, I'm fucked and you can't help. <laughs> no, I just probably just pour raw coffee down your neck. <laughs> <laughs> right, what's fucking next? <laughs> Not coffee, I hope. <laughs> Don't sniff your socks, folks. No. What about next, then? Man who killed hundreds of deer is said to watch cartoon classic Bambi repeatedly. What? <laughs> what? A Missouri man convicted for illegally killing hundreds of deer just for their heads has been jailed in order by a judge to repeatedly watch Disney's Bambi as part of his punishment. I like it. David Berry Jr. was told to watch the classic animated movie at least once every month during his one-year jail oh, sentence. Oh, that should be every day. You can do it. Not once a, a month. Clockwork Orange, isn't it? Yeah, you, you have to. Yeah, but then he might come out and kill <laughs> way more fucking deer, Mike. Do you know what I mean? Hold his eyelids open and force-feed him Bambi 24-7. Bambi, <laughs> do you think he's going to love deers when no. he comes out? No, I don't. I fucking hate Bambi. But he's when already he's killed a hundred of them just yeah. for their heads, it's head. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't after any of the good bits. It's the useful bits. 
just the heads. Trophy. Mm. What was he doing with a hundred dead heads? I'd argue he's some kind of fucking sociopath. Oh, yes. Yeah. Go fucking the fuck out of him, isn't he? Kid? I mean, gee, he's just going to resent Bambi. Yeah, I think he should be shot. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it's usually me that says that. Yeah, no, you no. You fascist. Yeah, I am being fascist on this one. This guy needs to be put out of his own misery, not with Bambi, with a bullet. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah. What a twat. Yeah. A hundred But I just think making him watch Bambi, I'd be resenting Bambi by the end yeah, of that. I think it's going to backfire, I'll be honest. The accused was convicted for what has been called one of the largest deer poaching cases in Missouri's history. The Springfield News leader reports he killed his prey just for their heads, quote, leaving the bodies of the deer to waste. What is a cunt? Yeah. Mm. There's any argument about that? No. Fuck him. We want? Yep. Oh, Russia's most modern robot revealed to just be a person in a suit. <laughs> and I saw this myself, I think I had this a few weeks ago. <laughs> um, oh, a be. robot hailed as the most advanced creation in Russia was actually just a man in a suit. <laughs> the android, known as Boris, took to the stage at a Russian technology conference to light the world as entirely lifelike moving and dancing. It was so impressive that it appeared on Russian state television, celebrated as the most modern robot and produced by a team of students. A video of the event went around the world, showing him taking part in banter with people on stage, <laughs> being led through a series of dances, and his success was used to encourage children to explore robotics and as proof of a technological breakthrough. It was clear that if the robot was real, it would have been one of the most advanced examples of robotics in the world. It was world. a fucking transformer, basically. <laughs> Soon after that celebration, however, it became clear that it was so lifelike because it was literally alive, with a man standing inside its body, controlling its functions. Ugh. Yeah, apparently you could, um, there was a, in the, when people looked at the video back, there was uh, like a gap between the head and the neck, you could see human flesh in it, <laughs> like the neck's flesh in it. Uh, it wasn't clear whether sensors would allow it to take part in the world were placed for one. It's only seen to have LED lights in its head, so it's a member of Daft Punk. Yeah, <laughs> Rather than any visible camera or other sensors to allow it to understand its environment. It also appeared to come completely out of nowhere. The robots made by Boston Dynamics, often tailed which is the leading company in creating robots that move like humans, have taken years to develop, even simple abilities, and their movements are far behind some of those being shown during the demonstration. Its dancing seems a little too human. Its movements were clumsy, like a person trying to dance while struggling with the weight of a robot suit. Not a robot that had been taught <laughs> to dance, <laughs> as claimed. And most perhaps tellingly of all, the robot suit looked perfectly made to a man to fit inside of it. Although the real robots tend to have very slim limbs, but Boris's limbs seem to be well proportioned to allow a person's arms and legs to fit inside, unless you're the guy that played C-3PO. Hmm. Should you got him in? Well... Fucking, I can't believe they called it Boris. No, neither can I, actually. Mm. Taking the piss. Well, I think that's the weird news, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Wonderful week. We've got, do you want to explain uh, the game show, Ben? Well, the game is called Full Alex, and each week Mike finds us a uh, couple of clips of some random weirdos who we then pit against Alex in some kind of deathmatch battle royale to find <laughs> out who's the most batshit insane. Uh, we call it Never Go Full Alex. You should never go full Alex. Half Alex, all right? Quarter Alex, okay? Uh, Maybe three quarters. Yeah. Gaz has gone three quarters Alex on a couple of occasions. Hey, I think we all have, haven't we? Yeah, maybe. In our own little ways. Yeah. I've definitely got the closest to going full You've, Alex. Though, in public, really. you have. Yeah, I've been shouting at strangers in the street, which I realise is quite close to full Alex. <laughs> but, hey. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> so, false. Who we got this week, Mike? Challenging Alex for his crown of most crazy man on the planet. Who are you trying to get crazy with this, eh? Don't you know I'm loco? First up, we've got Stefan Molyneux, who says his trip to Poland sold him on white nationalism. Have we had Stephen Molyneux before? No, I don't think so. Okay. Where's that name, though? And so have I. Yeah, he's quite a famous right wing thinker, I think, on the internet. Okay. Let's see what the cunt's got to say. 
First of all, I've always been skeptical of the ideas of white nationalism, of identitarianism, and white identity. However, I am an empiricist, and I could not help but notice that I can have peaceful, free, easy, civilized, and safe discussions in what is essentially an all-white country. The monoculture that has survived from the Middle Ages through the Renaissance, through the Enlightenment, through the Industrial Revolution, into the 21st century in Poland is something to be treasured, respected, admired, and protected. The second thing I got from Poland is that the view of Poland from outside Poland, the ideological view, the leftist view, the collectivist view, that they're all Nazis and fascists and xenophobes and white nationalists and so on, is not only false, is not only wrong, factually, it's wrong morally. These are good, decent people who love their country and have suffered enormously to retain its integrity, and they should be celebrated and honored, not slandered, for some obscure, nefarious political purpose. That is wrong. The Poles are not guilty. And guilt has been so infused into the hearts and minds of Europeans and of whites that to see a shame-free and guilt-free culture, a resilient, strong culture that is resisting collectivism, is something that moved me more than I can probably ever express, but I hope is encapsulated in the footage that you're seeing in this documentary. White guilt is just a horribly profitable vending machine that people pound in order to get resources from largely white male taxpayers. And it's a horrible shakedown, and it's something that should be enormously resisted. And if you doubt as to why it should be resisted, look at Poland. Look at the glory, the celebration, the peace, the cleanliness. Everywhere I went, the streets are clean, the people are civilized. I did not see one drunk person, I did not see one fist fight, I did not see one crazy protester out there threatening violence because there are ideas that they don't agree with. What's not to love about something like that? And the third and perhaps the most important thing I got from Poland was, this is what a serious country looks like. I think we can all agree that there are a lot of Polish people. Yeah. They are very proud of their culture and their traditions. In fact, it's the, uh, we're recording this on the 23rd today, aren't we? To, uh, 24th is Polish Christmas Day. They celebrate on Christmas Eve. Mm. So Merry Christmas to any Polish listeners we have. Mm -hmm. But they're not racists and they're not white supremacists and I, I don't think they have any white guilt. Do you, have, do you guys have any white no, guilt? No, he's putting a straw man up, isn't he? He's yeah. saying that we're saying that all Polish people are racist and Nazis. Well, hang on a minute. No, we're not. No. We're not saying that. It's easy to put up a straw man and say, look, this is what people are saying, and attack that straw yeah, man. Don't get me wrong. Attack Listen, the reality. There are Nazis and white supremacists in Poland. Yeah. yeah. The same, same as, as there are in Britain, yeah. Wales, everywhere. So he's doing the same that the negative people, he's making massive general sweeping yeah. generalizations. I was trying to think desperately then. I spent a week in Poland as a guest of my good friend and I was very lucky and I'm sure everyone showed me the best of, because they wanted to show off. In the city, nobody give a shit that I was English. They're used to it, tourists. But in yeah. his village, it was a big deal that I was there. A British, but everyone wanted to show me some hospitality mm. and show me, hey, we're not a shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And I felt it. And there were times when I didn't feel safe, but not because of violence or drunk people, just more of me feeling out. Of, it's weird. Not, I had, I wasn't with anyone English. I was the only English person. And when everyone's talking Polish for hours on end, man, it's a little bit disconcerting <laughs> at times. Yeah, yeah, I can see Especially that. Especially when things get rowdy and stuff, and you can't quite follow what the fuck's going on. And, so there were times I felt scared, but it was nothing to do with, I think. So I was desperately trying to think then through his thing, I was thinking, and no, I didn't see many people of colour at all, but do I think it was some perfect paradise? <laughs> I remember thinking, I am so grateful for living where we live. Mm. Our roads, th things we don't Take ever advantage. think about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Our roads are smooth and filled in. Yeah. Like, there's a fucking saying in Poland, if somebody's driving in a straight line, they get pulled over because they're probably pissed. 
because <laughs> normal people drive like this. I'm I'm miming swinging from side to side to avoid the fucking holes in yeah. the ground. Yeah. So if someone's just going in a straight line, they're probably pissed. <laughs> Tiny things that we mm. just fucking. You know, you go into a village, and I did see poverty. No two houses are the same in a village because everyone built their own. Oh, oh. Out of different materials, out of like some are built out of one type of material. Another one will look like a prison compound because they built it out of fucking something <laughs> weird. But yeah, I don't, clearly the guy is making sweeping generalizations. Yeah. Which, whether they're positive or negative, anyone with a brain can say, well, that's false, isn't it? So it's, uh, let's have the next one, Mike. Next one is Bill Mitchell. He explains how Trump is like Abraham, David, Solomon, and Han Solo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello. I believe that this is God's country, and I believe that uh, he is uh, that uh, Donald Trump is his man that he's chosen for this time. People say, why would Donald, why would uh, uh, God pick a man like Donald Trump? Look back throughout the Bible. Donald Trump is exactly the kind of man that God has picked throughout time. Why? Why would God pick the Abrahams? Why would he pick the Davids? Why would he pick the, the, uh, uh, the Samsons? Why would he pick the uh, Solomons? Why would he pick the, the Pauls, who was, who was Saul and used to murder Christians and ended up writing about, uh, about half of the New Testament? Why would he pick these people? Why would he pick these people that, have got, that had you know, uh, failings and, and, and uh, some not so great things in their past and not, not necessarily tremendously known as pious people and use them to save the world? Why? Because then we know it's God. If God just used the most pious and the most perfect all the time to save the world, we would just assume, what well, was these guys were so pious and perfect, they did it. But when he takes somebody who had some uh, needed a redemption arc, okay, and he uses them to save the world, then it's like, wow, that's amazing. And it's like Han Solo in, in Star Wars. You know, if Han Solo was, was a hero from the very beginning, he was a great guy, it would have made God of a boring story. Yeah, okay, yeah, Galactic Hero saved the universe, you know, he was Mr. Clean, oh, we get that. But he was a, a rapscallion. He was a smuggler. He was the bad guy. He was the bad guy that was going to, you know, I remember when Luke was on the ice planet and that big, you know, Sasquatch grabbed him. And uh, Han was like, I'm leaving. I'm out of here. You know, and Leia's like, oh, yeah, I expected that of you. And the audience is like, oh, Han, how can you do that, Luke? You know, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. And then Luke all of a sudden, or Han all of a sudden shows up and, and Cat finds Luke and saves Luke. And you're like, yes, that's redemption arc, folks. Redemption arc. And that's, I believe, what Donald, uh, God is doing with Donald Trump. And he's going to do with America going forward. Well, first of all, he's got this fucking story like a player sink left Star Wars. And he can't fucking speak properly. He's no. like a fucking impediment. Not that that's a thing, but you know. I do love the. Uh, we had the subtitles on, the Autonomy uh -huh. subtitles. And uh, <laughs> for some reason, it's caught with uh, I believe what Nob God. <laughs> NOB, Nob. Nob God believes. Nob so. God. Well, we all, worship the, we all worship the knob god, Mike. I believe what knob god is doing. <laughs> uh, oh, the knob god. god. No, well, he's just... No. So what the fuck was his point, then? That Donald Trump is doing the same thing that, that heroes in movies do when they start yeah. off bad and then become good. Yeah, heroes it's, in the the Bible. Bible. it's a trope of fiction! No, the Bible. He's saying the yeah, Bible. Fic that's, that's my point. Yeah, but he it's doesn't a trope believe... Of Fiction. He doesn't believe it's fiction. This it doesn't is happen problem. in real life. In real life, someone's a cunt. <laughs> they genuinely, yeah. usually, I mean, there's examples of the opposite, but usually they stay a cunt, don't they? Yeah. They yeah. do cunty things, the old cunted, shitty little cunt life, because they're a cunt. Yeah, Jimmy Savile didn't have a redemption arc, did he? No, no, he didn't. No. And then this fucker here, he's like, yeah, oh, you know in the movies <laughs> when they start off like a bad guy, but then something happens to challenge their morality and they turn out good? Well, that's what Donald Trump's doing. Oh, no, he's not me, because that's, you're talking about tropes of dramatic fiction, which is like, it's like creative science. There's like rules to creating stories and fucking, uh, and they're basic fucking tropes of, of storytelling. What are you on about? It doesn't mean, to, oh, because fucking Han Solo turned out good in the end, so will Donald Trump. Yeah. Oh, you cock. Terminator, he turned good in Terminator 2, didn't he? Yeah. Can I just point out as well that uh, I'm pretty sure in their, their belief system it says that the Antichrist is going to dazzle them and, you know, make them think that he's the real messiah. They all think Trump's the messiah, the, the faithful are going to think Trump's the messiah. When he's not, he's actually the Antichrist. How's are that? You How's that for a theory? Out, are you pointing out 
contradictions in the Christian religion, Ben? I, hey, may I mean, come on now. I may be. Come on. I'm sorry. Come but... on now. Fair game. You can't do that. It all makes perfect sense. There's absolutely no holes in any of it. We all oh, know right. that. Okay. Don't we? I was just, you know, thinking maybe they're maybe worshipping a false Stop messiah. Stop thinking! What are you thinking for? Oh, sorry. It's yeah. God! Yeah, man and dinosaurs live it's together. It's God! There's Noah's a collection plate. Through. It's God! All oh, right, sorry. Collection sorry. plate. God! Have some money. Collection Thank you. Thank God! More money. He forgives you. And I am the conduit to God, because I said so, because I've got a uniform and I live in this big fucking weird building. Right? Ten percent and I've just wages. told you, give me the money and I'll tell you it's all right, you're okay. Now fuck off, go. Here's 10% of our yearly wages. Thank, Thank you very much. I want more. 20. 20, all right. God! Okay, yeah, 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 all right. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> What's your question again? Um, God! <laughs> the answer, God, him! <laughs> okay. There's no holes in it. John 30. Stop questioning. If you shut yes, up, if, you, if, you, if I give you 30, yeah, will you shut up? Yeah, stop asking questions and give me 30 <laughs> Fantastic, there you, there you go. Stop asking There you go. Thank you. Moving Next one. On. <laughs> Next up, Alex Jones. That's not real then, is he? No. Alex Jones says he's <laughs> having more children so he can beat the globalists. <laughs> well, I think Alex has won this. Oh. Okay, let's see what he's got. The elite psychopaths, they are seeing all this and are testing it on us and now really do have massive life extension. They've got stuff that's AI. It's just not self-aware, but it's artificially intelligent. And... What we know they've got is so advanced that that's why they act like we don't even exist now. They've got a plan, they're carrying it out, and they don't want us to be aware of it or to have any culture. And people that are part of it are scared, and they're there dutifully following their orders. You watch those Google, Facebook, and Twitter executives in those hearings attacking InfoWars. They were scared of Congress, and they were scared, and they were there like little scientists. Yes, sir, we're doing it. <sighs> Program operational is. We're going to shut them down, don't worry. Because they've been they've been dialed in, okay? They want themselves to be safe. That's why almost none of them have families. Because they're saying no one in the EU leadership now has children except for five countries that are pulling out of it. They all have kids. All the major elites don't have children now, ladies and gentlemen, because they've been told you may not get access into the ARC centers the below ground facilities in places during this if you got kids and we don't want your kids there they're like we understand i mean we're close folks none of them are having kids because they wouldn't put kids there what's about to happen i'm having more i'm putting i'm taking everything i'm putting everything i got on the table i'm gonna have more children we're going into this we're gonna win I'm putting everything on the line i'm not a coward i'm having more and i love them more than my life a thousand times and that's why i love them enough to put them on the table so they have a future and i'm not going to give up on humanity just because these sick psychopaths have decided to bring in world government and kill everybody doesn't obama have two children we do argue that uh, he's one of the illuminati in alex's view here is at the one yeah a lot of these people are children okay now i'm with number two that's my my answer is number two. I don't know, because we, we went through everything with Alex there. We attacked the American government. We attacked the EU. Yeah, we attacked globalists. We attacked the Illuminati. So it's going to be a major disaster. They want the human race to die out. I mean... It's kind of standard for him, though. Yeah, I, I was it more is. like taken with the second guy's idea that the rules that apply to created fiction <laughs> <laughs> can yeah. be applied to real life as a rule. I found that to be slightly... Yeah. He should be medicated. I feel. Yeah, I'll, or, give, you I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Probably too late. He's definitely he's probably got kids. Or First guy was just a bit of a cunt. Yeah, I can't remember what he said. He was just said. saying that Poland was a. We oh yeah, yeah, Poland yeah. was a bastion of white nationalism, effectively. Yeah. Well, it's just false, isn't it? You can't you can't say one nation is any one thing, can you? No. You can't stand in Britain and say. Britain. I I was hanging out with some racist in Britain this week. I'm telling you, Britain is a country that wants nationalism. Well, no, you can't say that because it was just one groups. He can't spend how much time he spent in Poland said this whole nation means this one thing. That's millions of people yeah. you're talking about, yeah, exactly. dickhead. You can't fucking What he said is in no violence, no fights, no drinking. Oh, bullshit. It's the cleanest place I've ever it's, been to. It's got one of the highest alcoholism rates, I'm sure. Uh, and they have pro Nazi rallies there, so yeah, that's there is fascism there. We've all been to various European cities in our mm. lifetimes. Have, have you ever been to a a European sea centre and on, mm. on night out there's a fist fight or anything going on I mean no actually no and I've been I went to Milan 
ten times in two years because I had a friend who lived there. Uh, and I now that you've mentioned that, I never saw one single incident of actual violence. Now that I think about it, I saw some argy bargy people getting upset with each other, shouting and bawling. Yeah, that's just sort of standard. Not much of it. No. Yeah, no, no violence. Now that I think about it, does that mean there's no violence there? No. Does it fuck? It just means that it, you know, it's not so fucking rampant and yeah. commonplace. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the, the British psyche, because I mean, you can. So I we can, are. A, we're I probably the most in, violent society yeah, in Europe. Uh, Friday, so I, I went to get my. I went and got tattooed Friday, and I left at half past three to walk the train station. In the afternoon. Right, right in the right. afternoon. Right. It was Mad Friday. Wow. Okay. Right, it's the Friday when everyone breaks up for yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Now, at half past three, I mean, I'm walking from. Um, one end of the high street to the other to the train station. It's about a good ten minutes. Uh, Every single pub, and there's mm. a lot of pubs in that high street, all the way down the train station, mm. was full. Yeah. Every single one. And I thought to myself, I am not going out tonight. No. You can't tell me there wouldn't have been fucking trouble in there. Tonight. Everyone's on the piss. Mm. And after half past three, every pub is full. And they've been there since one o'clock. They've been there since midday. Yeah. Fuck that. Oof. I've got no interest in it anymore, man. No. I'm completely... I have partied, I'm 35, and it might sound sad to say to some people listening, but and do you know what, I had this conversation with my, my best friend from uni, he's a teacher, and he didn't go on the big staff end of year, because he's our age, he's got yeah. one daughter with his missus, they're married now, and he's totally in the same boat that we are now, just like going out, fuck that, you know. And they were sending him videos of them, like, because they're all younger than him, the other teachers, sending him videos. You should be here, look at it. They were doing, um, you know, a bong, a straw bong with yeah. a bottle. A bottle of Smirnoff ice, you use the bottle as a, the straw as a snorkel. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, 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 And then yeah. you can down the entire thing in one without the air building. And he was like, is it wrong that I, it just made me feel like, ugh. No, that's. I'm not sad that I'm not there. And I'm like, no, it's not. I'm like, we <laughs> might. Thirty five doesn't sound that old, does it? But mate, no. Ooh, I don't want to go out amongst them, amongst the Jeez. sheeple, the regular. I did it. I did. I told you, I did it an entire day and night. We did. Now this, this will make your skin crawl. Yesterday we went to the town centre to do present shopping uh, from about. Town uh, centre, big shopping centre, yeah, military. From about midday to about. Close to five o'clock in the evening. Oh, right. that's a lot of present shop. Then we went home, wrapped a load of presents, had a little bit of food, a couple of drinks. Then we went to fucking Asda and did the food shopping. What can you do in one go? At like nine at night. No, I needed, dude, I was ready for. She knew I needed to go home and have a smoke and just relax for a bit. And in a way, I'm glad because it's all done now and we're going to have the best Christmas. We're supplied up. But it was, it was horrendous. The sheeple, and I don't want to sound like an. You do sound like a dick when you call people sheeple and fucking humanoids and that. And I usually say it as a joke. But when you're in amongst it like that, like I was yesterday, you can't help but think it. We're all, and I was thinking it of myself as well. Like we're all, we're all in this fucking grinder, this commercial grinder that's told us all. Yeah. None of us can afford this. Well, some, you know, there are rich people where it's not a dent, is it? But your average. I would say the mass of the people in this country are either borrowing money or spending money they've had to save or scrimping on something or yeah. for this fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Machines got to keep turning, guys. We've got to keep that GDP going up. We've got to keep the economy going, which is taking more resources from the earth and putting more pollution into the air, which is killing us all. Yes. <laughs> We built this city under... <laughs> Sausage rolls. No, there's a good feel-good story. We built this though. city on fucking shit and lies. <laughs> Are you aware of that, the sausage rolls story, though? Yes. The, That's the, um... a feel-good British story. For any listener who's confused what I'm saying, Lad Baby is a YouTube channel that I genuinely quite like because they started as... They're just genuinely nobody. Just a guy with a wife and two kids. And he started doing YouTube videos because they play pranks on each other. Yeah. And they got very, very popular through that. And then, basically, for charity, for a food bank charity as well, which I love, rewrote the lyrics to We Built This City on Rock and Roll to We Built This City on Sausage Rolls, which is so British, and we're a fan. We've talked yeah. about Greg's a lot on this show. Even though the owner's a pedo. 
Well, yeah. Or possibly a Satanist. Yeah, but that doesn't affect the taste of the sausage rolls, no. does it? Unless, unless they're, unless they're the been herbs. served in places that we don't unless want to know about. Unless they've been spiked with blood. Them. Unless, yeah, to murdered bless, fetuses. To bless the every single sausage them. roll that's dipped into the fucking... What if it's all the lap stainness of the fucking child slave rape victims. What if it's all yeah, dipped yeah, in the adrenal I'll try and tell a nice story about Christmas Sorry. number one then. Uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone! everyone. Oh, man. <laughs> Welcome, cutting through the bun in a post shoot the pockets presents Dark Christmas Part Two. That's why I think we should call our Christmas specials from yeah. now on Dark Christmas. Yeah. yeah. This year should be Dark Christmas Part Two. Next year will be you know. Part Can we call it Black Christmas or Black? No, but in this day and age, then that's probably. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I'd go for Black Christmas, <laughs> but we can't in this day. Oh, man. You'd yeah, be you called right. a Nazi and beaten yeah, up. That's true. Yeah, like the man you wanted to kill for wearing his own flag. Only if he was a gallon. No, well, he's got every right to wear his no, own flag. No, he hasn't. Yes, he the has. dress code. Oh, my Just God. Just a with the dress code. be fine. How do you manage to be such a Nazi and such a fucking wet liberal pussy at the same time? <laughs> it's very confusing. It is. <laughs> 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 Where the fuck are you on the spectrum? You're fluctuating like I'm the man of common sense. I think we all no, do you're not. I think we all exactly. do the same that's sense. why partisan politics is shit bollocks, isn't it? But that's too deep for the end of an episode. Can we please wrap <laughs> it up? Because I need to go home and help my girlfriend clean the house after ignoring her all day because I had to watch fucking Starship Troopers. You go and deep clean the house. I was about to cans. help deep clean the house. Yes, there's a lot of cans. An excessive. It is embarrassing when I have to take the recycling out. I'm not going to lie. Normal people don't. Have, I have noticed. I look up and down I'm the street. I'm so glad normal you're people, the bin Normal people don't have that many empty cans, Ben. You know how many are in your bin that you don't look at because they fucking do it for you. You know what I'm on about. You do. It's not normal. No, I take it out. Oh, do you? All right, yeah. then. Yeah, but do you ever look up and down and notice how you've got significantly more well, than any other the household. They all go in the in the bin now. I don't have to hide it anymore. Mm. You're just using the box. <laughs> I the box help, of bin bags. I need, what I'm trying to say to you. I need help. <laughs> well, no, I just hide them in the bin and pretend everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's what we do, isn't it? We're British. Exactly. We just have a cup of tea and it all blows up. We just pretend everything's fine. <laughs> It it's works fine. in carrying up the car, but it'll work here. Mm. Them French, they'll do all the rioting for us. We exactly. just, we'll just sit here and have a bourbon biscuit. Mm. Oh, I fucking love being British, I do. And I love the fact that the sausage roll number song is number one. Or a, chocolate any fucking English or, or a chocolate malted... Or a chocolate malted milk. Okay, who's mm. the most mad yeah. this week's? We need to fucking wrap this up. We've just rambled. Oh, it's rambled. Um, the second guy yeah. in it. Yeah, Mental-wise. That's, that's um, my money. Alex is good, but he's going standard, Alex. This guy going. believes his own shit and he thinks story rules apply to real life yeah. rules. Okay, so Bill Mitchell is... The winner, newcomer? Yeah. Newcomer well, wins. He is, yeah, I believe he is. Newcomer Rookie wins. of the year. Mm. I think he's won my Rookie of the Year award, yeah. shall we? There you go, he's got the fucking belt. Right then, Ben, you know what to do. Ah, well, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with the Star Wars, Starship Troopers Part 2. And uh, I've been Ben. Uh, don't do the flavour aid and don't join a cult. Uh, I've been Gaz, free Biff Tannen, check out, uh, search YouTube for Mechafile by Apocalypse Bull. It's um, a 90 minute audio play thing that I did a few years ago and I would appreciate it if you had a listen. Uh, thank you and thanks for listening to this show and thanks to the boys. It's, it's been a good year boys, it's yeah. basically our last, is this our last one of 2018? Or it is. No, 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 it's not. Oh, we've got one more. Oh, oh when we get too sentimental then, <laughs> I'll just say thank you very much, lads. It's been a good year, and here's to many more. Thank yeah, you. I'll second that. I've been Mike. Thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you. And, Woo! Um, happy whatever it is you're going to celebrate. We'll tell this happy holidays. holidays. We don't care. Whatever you're happy yeah. about, fucking enjoy it while it lasts. Personally, remember the old days when there was a bonfire and orgy and lots of mead? Sounds good to me. Yeah. Sign me up. Go for that. All right, enjoy it.